live stream got it okay yeah we are live there come back here got it gonna start recording it perfect So thank you for joining our third panel of the day. Um, and in this third panel, we are welcoming Professor Sheikh Babu, um, Dr. Abdurrahman, and also Dr. Sheikh Bamba Jain, uh, who will join us in a few minutes. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll start by giving you uh, a background of um, Professor Sheikh Babu, then we'll pass on to uh, Professor Abdurrahman and then finish with um, Ahmed Bamba Jang. Uh, as a background, Sheikh Ant Babu is an associate professor of history at the University of Pennsylvania, where he has taught African history and the history of Islam in Africa since 2002. He is the foremost historian of the Mauritia uh, of Senegal and has published extensively on the genesis of the um, Mourid. Um, get my camera. And um, Sheikh Antababu is, uh, has also done various speech and lectures uh, at the United Nations for the Muslim Islamic community. And he's a very active uh, member of the community in the US and has also uh, written extensively on uh, Muridia and um, Shah Ahmed Bamba. Uh, I'll let uh, Shah Antababu um, say a few words before we uh, get started. Uh, thank you so much, Sidi. Uh, uh, it's for me a pleasure to join this panel and uh, I salute this initiative because um, as we all know, uh, one thing that certainly Sheikh Ahmed Bamba valued over everything, and I think I, we can all agree on that, it's knowledge production and knowledge sharing. Uh, I think there are many ways of celebrating his life and work. But I would say that the best way to celebrate him is certainly to do what he devoted his life doing. That is uh, producing knowledge and sharing it. And I'm delighted to be part of this panel and I'm happy uh, to be able to contribute to the discussion. Thank you, uh, Professor Babu. Um... I'll, I'll, I'll now introduce um, Dr. Abdurrahman, who is a very valuable member of the Murid uh, community in the US. Uh, he is the interim chairman of the clinical coordinator, uh, coordinator, spiritual and pastoral services, director of the Council for Mubaligut International Faith and Culture Wellness Center, which is associated with the Faith and Culture Wellness Project that project consult uh, was developed to serve the clinical practice need of Muslim families and culturally blended African descent family in the New York uh, area. Um, Professor Rahman is um, a doc has a doc doctorate in psychology, and I'll let him uh, share a few words with the uh, with uh, with the audience. Okay, uh, uh, shukran for the invitation and salam alaikum to my colleague, Dr. Babu. Uh, we journeyed for a, a, for a long time together. When he first was at the university and he visited me at the college campus, the journey started then. And so uh, in that journey, knowledge production has always been at the epitome of uh, our relationship here in the diaspora with um, the, the cosmology and the uh, transrational view of Amadou Bamba in terms of the transformative value to have for our community. And certainly this program is a testament to helping us to begin to have the dialogue that is necessary because we have an able steward in 
Sheikh Mutara and Baki, the, the youngest son of uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Amadou Bamba. And I'm looking forward to the dialogue today with my colleague and the other colleague panelists that will appear on the, on the platform. And thanks again for the invitation. Thank you, Professor Abdurrahman. And for this um, next segment, we would like to um, give Professor Babu the opportunity to present his book, uh, the perspective of the book and um, what we, why we all should be buying uh, his books um, because he, he, he's been a, a very friend follower and reader of his book. So I know the value of it, but I'll let him um, share that with you. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, CD. It's a pleasure uh, for me to uh, briefly discuss uh, my latest book, The Muridia on the Move, uh, right here, Islam, Migration and Placemaking, uh, published by Ohio University Press uh, in May of 2021. Uh, it follows uh, my first book, uh, Fighting the Great Jihad, uh, which came up in 2007, translated as um, The Jihad Alam, and a third book that I published in the framework of Histoire Générale du Sénégal, which came just this month, uh, which is entitled Ahmadou Bamba, Le Fondateur de la Mouridia. It, it's, it's a kind of a short biography of Sheikh Ahmadou Bamba, which draw from my master's thesis at the University of Dakar and from my dissertation thesis at Michigan State University. But our focus today, I think, is uh, the Muridi on the move. Uh, and let me just, I don't know in terms of timing, how much time are you devoting me to, to discuss, but uh, certainly I can briefly um, summarize uh, the history of the book itself, uh, talk a little bit up about its content and perhaps uh, reflect a little bit on uh, the lessons learned or the takeaway from the book. Uh, this is a book that uh, really has a long history. In fact, uh, it started while I was in graduate school. Uh, I conducted my first field work in New York City in 1996, 1997, for a seminar paper. And I was fascinated by what I saw. Uh, I came to the United States in 1995. So I was fascinated by what I saw in New York City, particularly in central New York, better known as uh, Little Senegal. Um, I saw there a community of Africans, uh, the majority of whom were Senegalese, and the majority of whom was Murid. Um, and I clearly saw uh, the imprint uh, of the Muridia on the space in central Harlem. Uh, the shops, uh, the name of those shops, um, the uh, thing that was sold in those shops, particularly uh, the place that sold the Qasida, uh, so, so basically, you can see the Muridia everywhere in central Harlem. Uh, and of course, you can add Amadou Bamba Day, which was uh, already celebrated, uh, was celebrated uh, at that time, was being celebrated at that time. And the question I asked myself at the time as a researcher was, well, how is it possible that these people that came here with no English, with not much money, um, certainly not understanding much about American culture. How was it possible that these Murid really were quite successful in making space for themselves in Harlem? How was it possible that they could achieve this? That's really what fascinated me. And the second question I asked myself is, was, is there a relationship between their Murid identity and their ability to make space and to find space abroad. That research took me beyond New York City to the west coast of the United States and later on uh, to Central Africa and West Africa uh, and to Senegal, of course. Uh, I returned to Senegal, focusing on 
uh, murid making space in Saint Louis and Dakar, but also in Cote d'Ivoire, in Libreville, and then in also um, France, uh, in Taverny and Olney sous Bois. And one of the things that I, I, I quickly understood was that all these murid diasporas that I visited share a lot in terms of culture, in terms of their way of translating a secular space into sacred space and their way of sanctifying wherever they go. And what I quickly learned was the mobility of Murid culture and the reality that Murid culture indeed travel quite well. Wherever the Murid goes, they take their culture with them. And this realization actually took me back to my first book. Because if, if you, those of you who read Fighting the Great Jihad uh, know that the last chapter, uh, the seventh chapter of the book dealt with Al-Buqa'a Al-Mubaraka or Kargumak in Jurbel. And, and what I wanted to do in that chapter and what I did in that chapter was to show how Sheikh Hamadou Bamba, under custody in Jurbel, was able to carve out something that I call Dar al-Islam or Dar al-Murid in what I consider to be Dar al-Harb or Dar al-Kufr, that is the escal of Jurbel. And what I discovered in my research is indeed, Sheikh Hamadou Bamba was certainly under French custody, but he was quite successful in making space himself that made him quite comfortable. That he was able to create a Dar al-Islam or a Dar al-Murid in Jurbel, in Kargumak, that escaped a French control to some extent and allowed him really to have cultural autonomy within the realm of, of colonial dom or the realm of the French uh, colonial administration. And some of the question I'd ask myself was, how was Sheikh Ahmed Bamba able to make this? How was he able to carve out, to create a space for himself, an autonomous space for himself that make him comfortable uh, in uh, Jurbel? And I look at different aspects of this enterprise of space making. Uh, I look at demographics, for example, the fact that he called all the major disciples uh, to come and to live with him in Kargumak or in Jurbel. Uh, you know, Kershak Anta, uh, Kershak Ibrafal, and many other houses uh, owned by Major Murid Sheikh around Kargumak. Uh, he was able to use Islamic geometry and Islamic architecture to completely reshape the space. When you look at Kargumak, you think of the mosque, but also you think of the cemetery, you think of the pinch, but also you think at the houses, the different cast, the different shape, the cascade. So in, in some ways, space itself was transformed in a way that conformed to the Sheikh's uh, ideal, uh, ideal city. Then you have the, the events going on, that is the content that is infused in that space. I'm thinking of, for example, the Eid that was celebrated there, Eid al-Fitr, for example, was celebrated there, Eid al-Had was celebrated there, and the colonial archive clearly show us that this was intentional because Sheikh Amaru Bambu was moved in Kargumak in 2013, and in 2014 already he had invited the Murid community to come to, come to join him. That was the first time in my research that he made a concerted effort to have his, his community around him. The number of people coming soared from 3,000 to 14,000. Uh, so you clearly see that when you look at uh, the way the demographics, you look at the space, you look at the events, a cultural event happening, clearly there was here an effort to turn uh, Kurgumak into Dar al Murid or Dar al Islam and to separate it from Dar al Kufr or the Eskal which was the domain of the French colonial administration. And to some extent, this process started with naming. You know, the fact that the Sheikh gave a name as soon as the French moved him to that place in 2013, he 
call it al Bukaha al Mubarakat. He gave it a name that separated completely from the environment he lived in. My argument now in this book, the Muridia on the Move, was that that kind of um, enterprise that Sheikh Amadou Bamba uh, framed and led and created in Jurbel uh, in transforming secular space into sacred place uh, as way of making the muridia uh, accommodate hostile space. I am arguing that that tradition actually has been transformed over time by murid disciple. And wherever murid go, they go with this idea of having uh, the culture in the murid with themselves. Uh, wherever you go in the diaspora, for example, you have considering Tuba, you know, uh, whether it's in Chicago, whether it's Berlin, in Berlin, whether it's in, uh, in probably in Tokyo, wherever they go, the Muridi will have a name for their place. That's where it starts. Then you have the name and then you have the shaping of the place itself. Uh, certainly Murid don't have uh, the possibility of creating the same uh, type of space then in Bukhal Mubaraka, but clearly wherever you go, you look at a King Saint Tuba, it reminds me as a researcher of what Sering Tuba tried to accomplish in al Bukhara and Baraka. Uh, they will use the space as a mosque. They will use it as a cultural center. Uh, they have an etiquette, uh, the way of living in that space. Uh, people having always a large lounge where you may have some uh, 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 some actually uh, chairs and so forth, but people will sit preferably on the floor, on the carpet, uh, it's a place where they share food, the berne. It's a place where dahira meet. It's the place where the social uh, uh, concern of people are debated and solved. So clearly, what I see is many, many al buqa al mubarakatu, a kind of multiplication, multiplication, uh, multiplication, and metastasizing of this space. And my idea in this book, what I wanted to do in this book was exactly to demonstrate this kind of mobility of Muri culture and the ability of disciple actually to, to transport the Muri dia wherever they go. Now, before uh, concluding uh, here, I just wanted to add uh, a few reflection on this. Now, one of the things that I learned also in writing this book is that, well, we are told uh, scholar who studied the Muridia have always considered that uh, murid disciples are just imitators, that uh, creation, uh, innovation always come from Tuba. Uh, what I have learned is that indeed, murid disciples are not only imitators, murid, murid disciples are also creators of culture, not only in terms of adapting it, but in terms of inventing new way of being murid or new way of leaving the murid abroad. Uh, I can give you here only two examples. For example, Ahmadou Bamba Day, something that was created in New York City in around 1988, but which is celebrated everywhere now. People are having Ahmadou Bamba Day in Senegal. Certainly, uh, this, is, this is interesting uh, that if, in fact, culture from the diaspora is being, uh, to some extent, repatriated, repatriated back in Senegal. What about Qasida, Qasida Day? Hasida Day was invented in Italy. It's the Murid in Italy actually who first started to celebrate those days for the Qasida. Today, Qasida Day is everywhere. It's everywhere in the diaspora. It's also uh, in, uh, in celebrated in Senegal. So one of the things then that happened with diaspora here, and this is not uh, only something that happened with the Muridia, is that the separation from, uh, from Tuba, uh, to some extent, create uh, space where Murid disciples can articulate their own way and their own understanding of the Muridia or twist it in a way that are the local circumstances. So to make a, a, a longer discourse short, of course, it's, it's very difficult to do justice to a, a book uh, in a few minutes, but you know that's basically the essence of my research uh, for this uh, second book. And uh, of course, uh, when you have, if you have questions or anything you would like, you would like me to clarify, I will be happy to uh, do that. Great. Thank you, Professor. This is so enlightening uh, for me. Um, just to learn about the one, the mobility of the marine community, but how actually you can correlate 
um, the space that Sheikh Ahmed Bamba have created in, uh, at, um, in Yarem back then and what the Murid diaspora is doing today to create the same space. Uh, I, I never made that, that correlation, but I, indeed I, I definitely can see what you are speaking about. And, and one of the things I wanted you to elaborate on it because uh, we have um, a few, um, what I would call the younger Murid uh, that are uh, first generation uh, in the US. How can they create their own space in the Murid uh, space in the diaspora? Interesting question, uh, 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 Yusu, uh, 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 Sidi. And if you read my book clearly, you know that the last, the very last paragraph uh, is about NST, Noisering Tuba. And, and I'm speculating here um, by suggesting that perhaps they're going to take the Muridia to a space where um, early generation did not, cyberspace, for example. Uh, I have looked at their Instagram uh, profile. Uh, I have looked at uh, their, uh, their use of the internet. And clearly, they're taking the Muridia to a new direction, just as early generation have been able to transport the Muridia from Senegal to the diaspora. These young men that are uh, children of uh, the Western world are also leaving their Muridia in a certain way. Uh, for example, uh, they use barbecue. You know, Sering uh, and, and, and the early Murid of, of Mika did not know about that. These young Murid of NST have their event in public park, a future of American culture, where you have barbecue and you invite people to stop by, uh, uh, to, to buy in a piece of meat or chicken, and then to ask a question, uh, to ask questions. Um, they are using English, the English language, uh, which certainly is not the vehicle of the Muridia. Uh, there is a lot to talk about about that. And in the book, uh, there are a lot, uh, uh, a large, uh, chapters, uh, a large paragraph where I discuss issue of language and the translation of the Muridia for American citizen uh, and how difficult it is. These young men actually think of themselves as having their own mission. In fact, Ndawi Sering Tuba just mean Sering Tuba's missionary in my, in my understanding. And they believe that they are more equipped actually to share uh, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba's teaching and message in the 21st century in a country like the United States, then their elder uh, father and, and, and mother, who certainly were pioneers, but who in the 21st century in the era of the internet, uh, certainly may not have uh, the kind of wherewithal in the understanding of Western culture that they have then they are. So, so to, to respond to directly to your question, CD, exactly. These young Murid are also kind of inventing ways of being murid in the diaspora and ways of understanding and translating the message of Amadou Bamba to Americans and to others in the 21st century. Clearly they are taking the murid to a new direction. Yeah, I, can, I can agree uh, more with that statement. Um, and my next question really comes to, um, in your book, you, you, you mentioned the fact that um, the delineation between the uh, economic, social politics, and other forces that um, power this movement. Like, can you elaborate a little bit more for um, the, 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 the person who have not yet read your book, um, like how they will be, uh, how they will see that connectivity uh, of those uh, different forces? Yes. Well, first, we're talking about diaspora here. We're talking about a people who left their country uh, to go to another country, uh, clearly for the purpose of a better life. Uh, when people left my town of Mbakebal or somewhere in Koki or wherever, they left to come to the United States or to go to France or to Germany or to Japan, uh, the first impulse was a better living, you know, to feed my family, to certainly was the better, was the, the first impulse. But then what they did was they travel with the culture. They travel with the Muridia and they draw from the resources of the Muridia that to some extent give their experience a holistic nature. For example, 
I talk about the concept of khidmah in the diaspora, that, yeah, these people are coming here to work, to earn money, but this is not your traditional way of working. These are people who think that they also have a responsibility toward Sheikh Ahmed Bamba and toward the Muridiyah. And then to some extent, it's their duty to continue to make the Muridiyah prosperous and successful. Because one way of being with Sheikh Ahmed Bamba and the Murid would say, Ligayel Serimbi, is to make sure that the Sheikh's prayers continue to be a reality. He was no, he's no longer here, but his prayers continue to be something that is alive and that's affecting people. And who does that? The disciple themselves do that. The disciple themselves do that. So there is this dimension that is very important. Now, there is an, another dimension that I also talk about. Maybe sociologists, I, I've done research, presented my work with sociologists, and what they like about my work exactly was, well, I, I'm dealing with people that are quite successful economically, but I'm telling their story in such a way that does not reflect really the value of neoliberalism and, and Western capitalism as you know it. Uh, because these are people who draw from uh, trust in Sheikh Ahmed Obama, for example. Uh, I, I give an example in the book of, of one Muri disciple who arrived in New York City. The second day of his arrival, who went, he went downtown to sell uh, his things, and then he was he was arrested by the police, and they took everything. Now, what did that gentleman say? Well, you know, they certainly ruined my day today. They took everything I had, but well, Sering Tuba also went through all of this. If Sering Tuba himself went through this hardship he went through, the exile and all of that, yet he came up on top. Why not me, the small Muni? Well. I may be ruined today, I may have my problem today, but I am just looking at the chef's model and I will do better tomorrow. So that kind of positive is positive spirits, the trust and the positive spirit, the belief that I will be successful no matter what, because the chef has been successful no matter what, that all the hardship I go through are test. That spirit itself is a driving force that made this marriage successful. And these are the kind of question that I, I, I touch. Of course, I give a lot of case studies of the business that the Murid themselves created. But I think what I just wanted to see to, to, to say here is that how they draw from Murid culture, how they draw from the Sheikh's biography and this experience to empower themselves to be successful in the capitalist economy in a foreign land when things are quite difficult for them. And Professor, as I transition to the next topic, any linkage between the diaspora murid and the local murid that are uh, born and raised in those uh, country of adoption? Well, it, this is a complicated question, Yusu. Uh, city, city. <laughs> Sorry, I could keep calling you Yusu. So this is, this is my last chapter of the book where I have interviews with uh, African-American murids, many of them. That and, and what they told me is quite disturbing. Some of, the, some of them clearly told me that Murid disciples have betrayed Sheikh Murtada. They told me that right in my face, that Murid Wolof disciple in the United States have betrayed Sering Murtada. And I asked why they say, Sering Murtada came here for us. And when he used to come here, we used to be around him. And he is here for us. He's not here for Senegal, for you Senegalese, but for us. Now, how come it is that when we come to your Dahira meeting, you talk your Wolof for three hours. I I'm just telling you what they tell me, four hours. It looks like we do not exist. Nobody care about us. About us. Nobody ask about our interest. Nobody talk to ourselves in a language that we understand. And they say, when saying Muhtada came here, and wanted to make Muhammad Balodi the leader of the Muridiyah in New York City, his intent was exactly that. That we African-American Murid are the reason why he is here. Because he wanted to make the tent of the Muridiyah wider and wider. I can testify to one example. I interviewed Bal uh, Balozi. And one of the things that he told me was when the first time he met with Sering Murtada, 
in 1988. He said, the Sheikh told him, my father told me, time is coming in the future where the majority of Murid will not be Wolof speakers. We've heard that, all of us heard that. But Balodi told me that Sheikh Murtada told him that. And Balodi told me, when the Sheikh said that, in my thinking, in my head, in my spirit, I say, I pray to be one of those murid that don't understand or are not of Wolof culture. That's what Balozi actually told me. So then these African-Americans who are very critical of the leadership of Wolof Senegalese murid in the diaspora certainly uh, are on something in need to be listened to. I, I cannot agree more with those statements. Um, and as a um, an introduction to our next speaker, uh, Professor Abdurrahman is um, one of those leaders uh, of the community that um, was in the community when Professor when uh, um, Sayyid Murtala uh, came in the U.S. and also was one of those that received the nigel. Uh, that was written, and, I, and I, I had actually the privilege of uh, seeing that document in Arabic and being able to read it in Arabic and translating it in Arabic in order to publish it in one of our magazines that we uh, published, I think, in 1990, um, it was in 2004, when, when we published it. And maybe without further ado, I'm gonna have Professor Abdurrahman um, give a summary of the book that uh, he wrote with his son. And by the way, he's, he was the first group of American that Sheikh Motala brought to Tuba uh, with the American kids, as they used to call them, where those kids were schooled uh, early in their, um, in the early years in Tuba, where they learn uh, Arabic, they learn the Quran, and today are successful um, Murid American in the US. Uh, Professor Abdurrahman, uh, please give us a summary of the book and um, why we should buy your book. Oh, okay. Shukran and, and salam uh, to, to everyone. And Dr. Babu did a great job. So for, for me, let me let me begin with, with, the, with the future in terms of the children. My, my son, uh, was in, in, in when he was in Senegal, he was there for four years. And when he came back to the United States, um, I, had a, I had a choice. I used to teach in public school before I taught in the university. So I took him to uh, the, the, uh, one, of the, one of the school, one of the Board of Ed regions. And they wanted to send him to a school in Queens where we lived at the time. And I wasn't happy with the school. And so I went to the, to the Board of Ed uh, Regional Office where they had alternative schools because I worked in one in East Harlem. And so when I went to the school, it was a school that was um, being established under philanthropic uh, uh, relationship, uh, Robert, Robert um, Wagner IAT. And it was a, a, a aligned with LaGuardia Community College. So the students who went to that school would get an opportunity to be able to benefit from taking advanced credits at the, at the community college level. So you see was one of those inaugural students about, I think the second uh, incoming class. So the principal said to me, now dad, I heard from you, let me hear from your son. So when you spoke to her, she was in awe. She said, oh, wow. She said, if you could find me 20 Muslim children from the United States that can have the experience that your son is expressing, this school was set up like a pre-chartered program and I give them a place in the school because what he had is phenomenal experience. So you should said to me, Dad, you have a responsibility. I know you're busy, you're, 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 although you're on sabbatical from the university, you are doing clinical work, you're doing a lot of things. You have to spend time really unpacking this because most people, the Murids and even our community don't understand the essence of, of, of this diggle and the relationship. So he kept saying it and I said, okay, I said, it's, it's, it's a your man task. I'm, I'm gonna try to, to get it done. So what the book does is the book brings together uh, um, the Diggle as a central container for the 
program that was created in Senegal by the uh, indigenous uh, 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 community, both African-American and African-Caribbean folks. And Baloji was integrally involved with that. And one of the things that was integral about the, 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 this particular book is that I try to use the cultural anthropological framework of uh, Barbara Mayav's uh, people, place, and story, the homo narin tradition that Af uh, people as a people, we are storytelling culture globally. And what, what kind of had me do that was the fact that Sheikh Mutala was very careful about putting this digger together. And he told me when I got the digger, I want you to take this to New York where the murid meet on Mondays, and I want you to give it to Baloji. No one knew about the digger. So I, I had on my kaftan and I on the plane, I put it in my pocket. No one knew it was there. I didn't leave it in my bag. I kept it with me secretly. And when I got to the meeting and I, I, I got there early in the Monday and I showed it to Baloji, he almost fainted. He never knew about it. And so I, and, and I was instructed to read it to the community. So from that uh, document, what Mutala wanted was to do was to create the whole idea of equity, uh, ikhma, and musawa, kidma, community cooperation. But you got to understand the backdrop of what Mutala did in conjunction with that. Shah Abdul Khadi, I met him in, in Kachovino, 1989. And um, Mutala said, go see him. I met Mamun Yang, I went to see him. He said, go see him and then Whatever, when you see him, come back to me and I have some instructions for you. So about a year or two later, he passed. So St. Kasim called me up and said, Mutala, I want you to come to Senegal if you can as soon as possible. He didn't tell me what it was about. He says, when you come, I want you, Mutala wanted to talk to you about something. So when I got to Senegal, St. Mutala was on his way to uh, France and he had on a black captain, I'll never forget it. And he said, Kasim is going to take you to several schools in Senegal. Since the community is committed about educating the kids, I'm about knowledge production. I want you to go with him. He cannot leave you until you decide what you want to do. So I was accompanied by a clinical person, a colleague of mine, uh, Jawar Hassan, who's a psychoanalyst, and her son who went on the trip at the time. Belozi's son was already there and another young man. And so when I'm passing, uh, Baki, by the by the uh, you say uh, Buntum Baki, as Mutala call it, across from Dar es Salaam, I saw this wonderful compound, and the thing looked like something that came out of one of those um, fables of old Timbuktu. I said, "Wow, Subhanallah, this thing looked real beautiful." So Kasim reaches over and whispers to me in the limousine, Sheikh "Mutala, want to know what you think about this house? You don't want to hear from nobody. It's one year from you." And he said, do you know the history of this house? I said, no. He said, this was built by Said Molo Aminata, the Caliph of the Bifas, for Said Saal Rahmatullah, may Allah mercy him, Said Abu Qadi, and Said Mutala, to come together to find ways to address the problems of the Murid as the community began to grow in the 21st century. So Said so Amount Aminata didn't live too far from the house. So they felt that if they were able to do, they could provide the kind of kidma that was necessary in service within the, within the Bifal tradition. So Abdul Khadir passed. The house was locked up no, and it was closed. And Sheikh Mutala approached the oldest son at the time. And when he approached him, he told him what he wanted to do. And he said, yes, this house must in fact go for that purpose. And that's how Sheikh Mutala acquired the house. So when I went to St. Sali, I was surprised. St. Sali kept us. He says he's going to Calcom don't leave, I want to talk with you. You're going to stay here. So he kept us for the whole day. When he came back, he said, whatever cast him have in that Idra document that you have, I know about it. Sheikh Mutal, tell me everything. He said, this is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. We're going to support that. So when the African brothers who have to conceptualize the project, you got to understand that there were four doctors involved for the project. Dr. Malik, he, is, he come from a, a family of... Um, medical doctors, his father was a Tuskegee Airman, his brother was passed away, may Allah bless him, and his brother was one of the country's most formative oncologists. And he was the youngest medical doctor to actually be the head of Howard School of Medicine. His father was a Tuskegee Airman and a formative physician. 
So Malik was also a dual designation. He was also a, a the first one of the first African American to get uh, as in medicine emergency designation. So he was a special emergency medicine was a botanist. And what we conceptualized was the breadfruit tree project and the Hydra Institute. Malik felt that Dr. Rashid was a um, it was a it was a herbal uh, a, a, a physician in terms of uh, acupuncture, herbal medicine, Dr. Curtis, who's an orthodontist, and myself at the time, the psychologist, they felt that we need to study the African community in the rural situation because Malik felt that if, if the three constituents that constitute your health, environmental factors, behavior determinants, and heredity, we can then begin to deal with the chronic condition that affect us as African people. And if, so we were going to build a state-of-the-art uh, medical diagnostic center in Tuba, along with the school as a way to give back to, 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 to the community. So the digger facilitated that kind of conversation. And so when Baloji went to the first model, Shemutala had him stay in the compound as three section, in his section of the house, which, which has a corridor at least to the mass. So Mustafa Lay was the principal at the time. And we had a, a language immersion and a cultural immersion program in the house where the kids study Quran uh, with uh, Ajami Arabic. And they went to them uh, during the during regular schedule. So we had a dynamic relationship between uh, the, the, the Murid community in Tuba, Dar es Salaam and the Florentian community. So the, the text talks about that narrative, but what it does in what Babu was saying in terms of the, the creation of, 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 of the more space in this text. And I'm looking forward for, for, for the both of us to have that conversation coming next year when we launch the, the, the foundation uh, between the two texts is that for the, the, the Senegalese second generation children who are born here, there is this whole notion, a, a book by um, French 1419 to, uh, 1471 or 17 to World War II. And they're talking about the fact that not much is known about Islam in the diaspora. Not much is known. And Sheikh Mutala, by having the container, this digger, it opens up that kind of conversation for us to dive deep. Because we are descended from people. For example, if you go to Jamaica, the work of uh, Dr. Uh, Sultan Afruz, Invisibility and Invincibility talking about the Maroons who had autonomy from 16, uh, 1655 to 1730 to present day. A majority of the leadership of that were Muslims. Uh, and, and, and even the, the, the culture of pioneers who came here to the United States, Sheikh Daoud Faisal was from Grenada, his wife was from Bermuda. Um, the Academy of Islam, Baba uh, Sheikh uh, and, uh, and his wife, they, they had a, a, a MOU with Al-Azhar University. So whenever they people go to that, they had relationship to go free to Al-Azhar. And then you have uh, Mama Hassan, uh, uh, Aisha, Ansar, and her husband. This, the, the present uh, 96th Street Mass that's in Harlem, uh, and that's in, in Harlem and East Harlem. The genesis was from these Caribbean people who had these institutions. Shit, that will go back to 1927 and before that time. One of their teachers who taught them Arabic was a scholar from Grand Common. So there's a wealth of, of, of knowledge. So when our people enter Muridism, and much kudos due to Sheikh Mustafa and Baki, he facilitated that kind of fertile dialogue in the diary in Brooklyn. And, and it's out of that formation, in fact, where Sheikh Mustafa recommended at the time to Balogi and myself was there. Sheikh Mustafa will attest to this, that he wanted us to create this framework and Baloji is going to be the chairperson. So these things were that arrive at in a in a kind of ad hoc way. They were the Sidmutala was very clear. And I think that the digital kind of helped him encapsulate what he wanted to see out of the relationship between the two communities. Because now, if you jump in a post-COVID world, the Africans in the diaspora and the Africans in the continent, we still are impacted by uh, the, the whole notion of chronic health conditions. And one of the things that we can say that, that what was dynamic about the relationship and CDU played an important part of this was the, well, was the wellness uh, a component that was developed between the Murid community 
and the Harlem Hospital. You and the, the Cultural Commission, all those who were involved between the Senegalese and the indigenous African descended people played a critical role. So what Sheikh Mutala was demonstrated by the, by the wisdom of that document about governance was important for us to understand. In our contemporary time, if we miss that, understand then the young people who are, who are now going to become the, the, the conveyors to kind of work with the diaspora will have a, a, a major gap because they don't understand that dynamic. And, and, and in medicine or in psychology, anything, they tell you if somebody comes to your office and you cough, another person come and cough, you can't assume that they have a cold because the pathway for what determines health are those three variables, those three dynamics. So Sir Mutala put those things for us in the container, which is not widely known. The current uh, configuration around the country does not embrace, and even the even the uh, wow, even the the foundation in Washington, any other tributaries in the country have to go back and understand the document because that document was central in creating United Nations program because he insisted that we must use the United Nations as the container for Amudu Bamba Day. Uh, and the cultural week has to be from there. And that's why with Beloji had in the, 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 the folks who were part of the um, Office of Protocols to work with him, we were able to facilitate so that David Dinkins, uh, Kenyatta and others who were part of that culture embraced that because there was a kind of you want to say kind of interdisciplinary, interrelational uh, framework that brought us together. And if we don't go back to the digger, everything else we do is basically would, would, would not have the same kind of depth that is necessary to, to provide the container for the next generation. And so my son said that you have to write it. So what I did, I wrote about that. And, and just to, as I end here, I'm taking a, a, a page from the steward of history. Uh, the university uh, chair, uh, uh, vice chancellor, Dr. Hillary Beck has made a statement. He said that nothing is wrong uh, with my colleagues in Africa in terms of the book that they wrote about the nine volume. It's an epic work. He said, but the, 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 the history of the diaspora is pale in comparison to what they put in the text. There's nothing about it in its, in its totality. So we need to have that kind of conversation and recently the AU CARICOM summit may be a way to look at some of those things. The, 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 um, the United Nations uh, proclamation of the, the, uh, the, the decade of African descent, which ends in 2024. Mutala gave us an example. This is how you, you do this. This is how you kind of do. And then I was talking to Mustafa. It comes from the, what I believe is the part of the, the, the cosmology in terms of the value position, the axiology, the epistemology of Muridism. Why? Because Saint Mustafa Gaid of Fatima laid the, the foundation because he played the role, the pivotal role in early Muridism and Saint Mutala picked up and carried it on. So the Diggle is an extension of what, uh, what was started by Saint Tuba. So this is one of the reasons why when I, and I end on this and I always end on this, guy was very profound to me. When I met this Mauritanian scholar in, uh, in, in, um, in St. Louis, and he said to us that um, he's happy that the African-Americans came to study here in Senegal. I said, why? He said, because when you go to the other part of the Islamic world, they don't give you the totality of Islam. He said, and I'm glad that you're in the house of Shed Mutala, because Shed Mutala, Amudu Bamba, Benila. So the, so the, so the Digila comes from the tradition of the of Murid cosmology. And, then, and, and that is part of a, a conversation that must be had. And when, Balo, when, when, when uh, Babu uh, responded to your last question, the digger makes the case. The digger make a profound case why that's important, because it's not talked about, it's not addressed. You can't ignore that. Because if you ignore that, then you ignore Amadou Bamba's teaching. Because his son is the conduit for all the kids that went to universities for knowledge production overseas, uh, to go to Al-Hazar and other places. Without Al-Hazar, they couldn't have had that kind of relationship. So you can't if you if you take Mutala out of the picture, you take a, 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 a you create a chasm in Muridism. and I think that uh, uh, that is a conversation that must be had honestly. And my son said, "Dad, you have to write this." I said, "Okay, I'll try to do the best 
and and ask Allah to guide me. And so this is this is the text I think that is that conversation we need to have. There's other things in the text that are there that kind of walks you through my journey in terms of understanding uh, my journey in terms of the Africans who are in the Caribbean and need to understand that as well. Uh, and, and so there are different stories and narrative, but the, the focus of the whole text is to show how the narrative telling is important. And, and the diggle to me kind of encapsulate the, the way in which you need to begin to examine that. If you don't, to me, you are, you have wasted all the time and, and, and we have not done been true and honest uh, to, the, the, to Muridism. And, and we love St. Tuba because it represents a lot to our people. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Very well, um, very well said. And, and, and to me, the vision of Sheikh Mutala is so clear and so um, powerful to the community. Uh, and I remember uh, taking a letter from uh, to him from Imam Bashir, and, and and he sat down and explained to me why he had three people at the house in New York. I, I remember he told me I have a, an Imam who can lead the community. I have a teacher who can teach the youth, and I have a convert who can understand the perspective of those that are um, um, new to the religion. And this was from his mouth to my ears. And, and, and to me, that was very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I like the quote that you ended uh, your presentation, uh, why the African-Americans best place to learn is tuba is really the the, the connection of culture, because culture is important uh, in learning whatever you uh, would learn. One question I want to uh, ask you um, is how to facilitate the relationship between the new generation of Marines that we are seeing um, today in the US and in the diaspora, I would say, to the African Caribbean American uh, community um, in the US. I personally see that there is no connection today and uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but how do you facilitate that? Okay, good, good, very good question, very good question. I, and, I'm, and, 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 you know, as a, as, a, as, a clinic, as a psychologist in terms of and having tr training in, 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 in theology as well and the, and the sciences, you know, you gotta go back and look at you know, examine Genesis, examine how things occur, conceptual ideas and theoretical ideas. And if you go back and we want to say, if you want to look at a conceptual framework, the Mika Cultural Commission was that. Because what it brought, it, it, it provided a space in our community for the Muslim Murids to invite people that necessarily were not Muslims but who had an interest to have a dialogue with us. So, for, so we had experts that was there and out of that grew the, the relationship that we had with the hospital. Uh, when, uh, bless her heart, Gloria, when she was the, the chairman of the uh, Harlem Community Advisory Body, she, when we were looking for space, she said, no, 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 I'm, you call Dr. Palmer, tell him I tell the call. And from that one call, the relationship blossomed. It blossomed where we had members who were, who were serving on the Harlem uh, advisory body. We were part of that year long uh, look by the Department of Health in terms of stroke disparities and because the moods were coming as part of the, um, the, the, the numbers of people, African-American Latinos who were showing up in high, high with hypertension, obesity, you know, high cholesterol and diabetes. So, 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 the, the Cultural Commission was a container because there was a, was a knowledge production and a learning entity. It was a learning space where, where learning occurred. And I remember even now, we, we are trying to get a space to locate the Murid uh, physically. Uh, and in that, in that early formation, we had African-Americans who were not Muslims who came to the mosque and they, they were so impressed with us that they were willing to kind of find access to resources so we can have a permanent house in the community. This was, that comes out of the Cultural Commission and you played an important 
role in that. We met regularly on Saturdays. Imam, the imams were involved with it. We discussed a myriad of issues. So the young people need a container because they don't understand that legacy. So in order for you to understand the legacy, you have, you have to, they treat things like Dr. Asa uh, Lidia also say, I want to know who am I, where am I from, and how did I get here? And if, and, if, and if the young Moors don't understand that, then they're going to go into the future making a lot of some of the same mistakes that the older generation made. Thank you. Um, any question for uh, either Professor Babu or um, Professor Abdurrahman before we uh, invite Dr. Um, Harim Bamajeng to talk about um, his book? Maybe just uh, for, for, while people are gathering their thoughts, one question I'm going to have for both uh, Professor Abdurrahman and um, Professor Babu is the, the future of the diaspora murid and how we can manage it. Um, Dr. Babu talked about um, the way um, Alaj Makanyai run the organization. Uh, he ran very effectively at his time where he knew exactly where all the Murids live and can knock at everybody's door to ask for whatever he needed. Um, today, um, that has changed and you, you, you don't have that commitment or you don't have that um, leadership that can get up and make it happen for um, for for the community. How do you um, balance technology, uh, community living, um, being read that refer back to tuba, and the independence that? Today's murid is seem to be uh, yielding for and um, um, asking uh, to have. Very loaded question. Yeah, very important, very very interesting one uh, too. Um, I, I in my book I kind of provocatively uh, talk about um, in the community what I see is a transformation happening with uh, some murid that I call kind of parochialist murid that are uh, very much tied to a traditional understanding of the muridia as a bridge, uh, I mean the diaspora as a bridge between Tuba and the diaspora, but in a bridge that is only one way bridge, <laughs> you know, it's one way bridge, it, it's only Tuba. Um, and then what I call a, a kind of universalist uh, community, which really think of Sering Toba and his work and their mission differently. These are Murid who believe that uh, the work of Sering Toba in the 21st, 21st century is not only sending Hadiya and going to the pilgrimage and going to uh, the Magal and so forth, but it's also bringing people into the Muridia. Uh, it, it's, for example, translating his work in English and French. It's, for example, what the NST is trying to do, now you're Tuba, using local culture as a way of uh, uh, bringing people into the Muridia. That you need to be culturally literate in the society where you live in. Uh, you just don't uh, uh, need to bring your experience from Senegal and transplant it here and hope that it's going to work. Uh, because what is going to happen and is already happening is that the old generation is leaving, whether it's retiring or whether they are passing on, because nobody is eternal. You know, all the people, we know them. How many do we know who are no longer with us? Um, and our son and grandsons are, great, uh, are, uh, are growing up here in the diaspora, whether it's in France or elsewhere. These are young Senegalese who do not have the relationship we have with Senegal who do not have the relationship we have with the Muridia, yet they have uh, 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 assets we don't have is old generation. Now, our challenge is how do we continue to make them love Sering Toba? How do we make them understanding his teachings 
in a way that it's it's easy for them is comfortable for them and in a way that they can transmit to people of their culture and their generation that's what uh, we are facing now uh, my optimism comes from the fact that uh, many of these young men, although they think differently than us, than us, many of these young men continue to love Sering Tuba. They continue to love the Muridia, but they are going to be murid differently. They are not to go to going to be murid the same way I am murid or you are murid. They are going to be murid differently. Are we ready now to accept that? Are we ready to accept their creativity in their way of being murid? That's where the question is. That's so true. Abrahman, how do you like how do you see the future of uh, well, the, uh, I, I think Babu Babu is, is going in a good direction, but I just wanted I wanted to say something and, and, and this is important. Uh, I was I was I was listening to I, I was reviewing an interview with Dr. T. Shaka uh, from the, the from uh, uh, he's a former chairman of one of the departments I think of history at uh, uh, um, San Francisco State University. And he was interviewing Dr. Theophile Bank, who we know is a, is a, is a mentee of Sheikh Anta Dea. And when you look into terms of knowledge production and the amount of work and the contribution to scholarship that St. Tuba have written, it pairs in comparison to those in the diaspora who understand the depth, the depth of Amadou Bamba's uh, contribution to Islamic club is writings. And one of the things that I, what that Teofila Benga talks about and the relationship with Tishaka is that because that, uh, Sheikh Antedia made a very important contribution in terms of the, the formation and, and furthering the scholarship of the Afrocentric scholars in the diaspora. So the Dr. Clark, the Dr. Benz, the Dr. Jeffries, you know, Molifikia Santis, all of those Afrocentric paradigms does give attribution to the contribution of Sheikh and to their formidable work, the Antiofala Bank. So the Cultural Commission, part of our, our vision was part of how do we kind of create the knowledge production? And how do we then kind of have uh, the terms of reference in the conversation, the transformation for the diaspora, for Muslims here, to see Amadou Bamba writings and work as a pivotal part of the transformation and the realignment process of African and descended people. And this is where the, the content of the digger plays that important role. So, um, so, so if we don't have the kind of container to do that uh, and, to, and not just to talk about um, the, cultural trans the cultural transfer of, 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 of knowledge in terms of the cause doctor, you know, in, in in the falsification of African consciousness, uh, Amos was to talk about the culture as being pivotal. So Amadou Bamba provided us with a with a with a, 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 a dynamic way in which Islam and Africanity kind of have a kind of very dynamic relationship. In our yes. people's experience, we people want to pass off other formations, culture as the only models and the only paradigm. And at the same time in the past, over hundred years of our people, those have not worked in our, in our community. So, so if, if the Afrocentric transformation have impacted psychology, sociology, literature, art in the diaspora among Afrocentric folks, who may also have Muslims, what about the pivotal work of someone who was a influencer of of, of uh, unto their early, early life. And so because we are not doing the stewardship, we are not inviting Muslims in our community to consider the works of Amadou Bamba. May Allah bless Baba for his work that he has trying. That is part of some of the, the genesis that need to take place because the African uh, continent and the scholars who come need to understand the, 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 the narrative of the diaspora and they don't. Absolutely. They, they, um, they, 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 they don't, they don't. I'm talking about Everybody talk about Juneteenth, 1619. But you're talking about slavery being in the Caribbean for, for over 500 years. 100 and something years before they brought it here because they perpetrated in Barbados and in Jamaica before they brought it to the South. So there, so there, is, there, there is interlocking narrative that need to be, to be part of that kind of discourse. 
And I'm hoping that in, in Tuba, you can have an institutional formation that, like they just had in Brazzaville, the first Pan-Africanist university in Africa. Mm-hmm. And, and so, and so out, of, out of the contribution of Sheikh, uh, of Sheikh Ante Diop and Teofila Bengal, that's now a reality. So African scholars who are doing work here say, well, he's telling them you have a home there. Our projection is that we're going to have about for 15,000 in the first phase, but the goal is to have 55,000 students to, to develop knowledge that has a kind of particular frame for us to solve African people's problem. We can't run away from it. So what Sheikh Mutala was telling us, he said, Lige yala yala faith. So if we're going to do that, we have to find a way that the, the scholarship of that Amadou Bamba represent in terms of the epitome of a high point of West African intellectual tradition that goes back to Timbuktu. We have to find a way that that is part of the conversation that is in our community through the Cultural Commission to, in terms of collaboration so people can begin to learn who Sentuba is. Thank it, you. It, it can't be kept a secret. Me, <laughs> if you allow me. Uh, uh, so I think uh, 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 my friend, my colleague, Muhammad, raised a very interesting question. Um, the articulation between Afrocentrism and Islam and Sheikh Ahmed Obama. Mm. I, I think uh, one of the challenges that, that, that really that kind of articulation raises is that we have to educate ourselves about Islam as an African religion. Uh, we have to remind those of us who are not familiar with the history of Islam that Islam is not an imperialist culture that was forced on African and which we need to cleanse before we can be true African. Mm. There are people who think that way. I think they need to understand that Islam has been in Africa before it became Islam, you know, uh, as we know it today, before the Hijrah, you know, from 613, 616, we have immigrants uh, from Mecca, including among them Ruqaya, the prophet's daughter and Uthman, his, uh, her husband in Ethiopia in Aksum with the Nagashi. We need to remind people that Islam is not Arab culture. This is very elementary for us. But I teach in universities where I teach Islam and I understand that many people still think that Islam is not part of African culture, that it's an imperial culture, just as Christianity as other cultures that were forced on Africans. They ignore that Africans are very much at the center of Islam, including Bilal, and including no in production. We don't get, we don't need to get to even Ahmed Baba of Timbuktu, but even before Ahmed Baba, so that Muslim, African Muslims are part of the founders of Islam in terms of participation, participation, but also in terms of production of knowledge. We need to teach people that exactly being Afro-Cassantrist doesn't mean excluding Islam from Africa and thinking that Islam is not part of African culture. Indeed, Islam is very much part of African culture. And certainly a good example of this is the example of Sheikh Ahmed Obama and others. Uh, this is a large conversation that I'm sure we cannot exhaust here, but I just wanted to uh, provocatively actually uh, 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 throw it there so that we can be aware of the challenges of Islam when we're thinking of some uh, of our colleague Afrocentrists who actually believe that Islam is just an imperial culture as other yeah. imperial cultures came to dominate Africans. See, no. see if, if, I, if I may, thanks for that, doctor. Let me, let me, let me just give a plug. Even, even, even in the, when we were growing up as children, even the, the Coptic uh, 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 erudites that I was exposed to as a child who, who studied uh, 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 Ethiopian Christianity, there's, all, there's always a discussion among them what is meant by Ethiopia setting forth as unto God. So, so they are they, so they are narrative conversation among them that even possible that when Nagos in, uh, accepted the, Mech, the, the, the pre Medinites to come to uh, Ethiopia, sent by the prophet in fleeing persecution and to give them heaven, that was part of scriptural, scriptural prophecy. And so we are not having these dialogues. Only some people I know that I know, Doctor, we have done a pretty good job. Dr. Wesley Mohammed goes back into antiquity and, and 
connects the dot to that as well. But, but we have to have the conversation with the Afrocentric folks so that they can understand, yes, it's not imperialist because Islam, and, and, if, and if we are, and if, from a linguistic point of view, and if, and if Dr. Theophile is the premier linguist, we're saying that human evolution is monogenesis, is, one, is monogenesis, not polygenesis. Language also had the same kind of formation. So if there are precursors to what Arabic became from an African framework, then it, it, it cannot be anti-African. So these are conversations that we need to have because the models are there. Because it, it's because of the destruction of the protectorate, why slavery became a factor for our people. So these are dialogue we need to have. And if the more, it, it, to me, it's, more, it, it, it's probably one of the places are more suitable for that conversation called what the transformative thing that Ahmad Bambu do, do in terms of about Islam in Senegal, because it gives you a prism to go back to the very beginning, in my view. Thank you, Professor Abdurrahman. Um, so then, Joseph, you're gonna hold on to your question for a, uh, a few minutes. I would like to really move on to uh, Dr. Uh, Harim Bambajang to uh, shift from history to uh, economics. Uh, it's now 10.30 in the car and I would like to really have uh, Dr. Jang um, share with us um, his book. Uh, and and, I, and I, I'm almost sure that he's gonna go um, uh, either in French or um, in Wolf, unless he would like to um, follow the, the lead of the two professors that we have um, ahead of us. Donc pour introduire um, Dr. Chia Ahmed Bambadjang, um, il est titulaire d'un doctorat en économie à l'Université de, de, de Dakar, enseignant-chercheur uh, et membre du laboratoire d'analyse de recherche économique et monétaire. Uh, Dr. Jai est spécialisé en questions monétaires, bancaires et financières. Et il est auteur de plusieurs livres. Et um, on, on voit beaucoup M. Jan uh, sur les plateaux de, de, de télé au Sénégal à uh, discuter uh, non seulement de, uh, de, 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 de l'économie à uh, Mouride, mais aussi uh, d'économie en général. Et je voudrais, je voudrais inviter Dr. Jan à, à, à parler un peu de son livre, à, à, le résumé de son livre et quelles sont les perspectives et en jeu uh, qu'il a, qu qu a abordé dans son livre, Dr. Jai. Bonsoir, Sidi, et bonsoir à, à tous les membres du panel. C'est un plaisir de, de, de participer à euh, ce forum et de vous présenter aussi euh, euh, le, le livre que j'ai publié il y a de cela un an sur la, la vision économique du, du mauritisme dans l'histoire de la pensée économique. Alors, euh, je pense que ce n'est pas, pas trop clair ici. C'est bon. C'est bon, d'accord. Ouais. Alors, alors euh, l'idée, c'était, euh, pendant la COVID, j'avais constaté que euh, tous les pays s'étaient ramassés, euh, ramassés à eux-mêmes. C'est-à-dire, chacun trouvait, euh, euh, les, cherchait les solutions à son problème. Et donc, aucun pays ne se préoccupait de l'autre. Euh, même sur le plan agricole, chaque pays voulait garder sa production. Il fallait commencer à réfléchir. Et je faisais un cours à distance. D'habitude, euh, j'ai fait des cours à Lyon et à Bordeaux. Et avec la COVID, je ne pouvais plus quitter le Sénégal. Donc, je faisais des cours à distance. Et, et comme ça, chaque fois, euh, dans, quand, à chaque fois que j'ai terminé mon programme là-bas, je faisais des exposés aux étudiants sur la pensée de, 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 de Chia Ahmed Bambo. Après, un étudiant m'a interpellé un jour en me disant que, mais docteur, à chaque fois que vous venez ici, vous nous enseignez l'économie de nos parents, quoi, de nos parents blancs, entre guillemets, ce que Keynes a dit, ce qu'Adam Smith, ce que David Ricardo, et ainsi de suite. Mais vous, comment vous vivez Sur quoi vous vous basez pour fonder votre économie et Tiens, je me suis dit que donc... C'est vrai qu'il a raison, parce que quand on enseigne dans les pays, certains pays, on est obligé de respecter le programme, mais il est intéressant de demander encore plus de temps pour exposer la vision que nous avons à l'intérieur de nous. 
Et depuis dix ans, je, je travaille, j'ai fait des enquêtes, j'étudie euh, la vision de Cheikh Al Khadim, parce que je me, je me disais toujours que Serine Toa a amené une civilisation. Donc, c'était un homme éclectique sur tous les domaines. Euh, euh, il avait fait un travail. Et donc, il nous appartient maintenant de réfléchir pour voir comment organiser euh, les, les travaux de Serine Touba pour sortir sa vision sur le plan politique, sur le plan économique, sur le plan social, sur le plan culturel et sur le plan même culturel. C'est une véritable civilisation. Et donc, je me suis dit qu'en tant que docteur en, en économie, euh, bon, j'ai eu trois livres sur euh, l'économie du développement, mais aussi la, la banque. Donc, c'était plus facile pour moi de trouver les instruments, de euh, faire un benchmarking entre ce qui s'est fait dans le monde et toutes les penseurs, tous les penseurs économiques que nous avons, de, de Adam Smith à, à Ipsiglitz, et voir maintenant organiser la pensée de, de Cheikh Hamoud Bambor. Le premier constat me venait de euh, des mourides qui étaient à Dakar, des gens qui n'ont pas fait des études supérieures, et pourtant, sur le plan économique, c'était les plus riches. C'était des gens qui s'en sortaient, qui tiraient leur épingle du jeu, qui n'appliquaient pas l'économie formelle, conventionnelle que nous enseignons dans nos universités, mais c'est des gens qui s'en sortaient. Je me suis dit que donc, on ne peut pas continuer à dire que les bols bol sont riches, les bols bol gagnent bien leur vie, pensant que c'est juste comme ça, des gens qui se sont réveillés et qui, et qui, et qui s'en sortent. Je me suis dit qu'il y a une pensée qui est derrière. Il faut qu'on essaie de, de, de faire un tout petit peu d'effort pour voir qu'est-ce qui se passe derrière. Et là, euh, pendant euh, euh, 5 à 6 ans, depuis 2010, j'ai commencé, mais à chaque fois, je faisais des études. Bon, je m'appelle Khadim aussi, hein, à chaque fois que j'écris sur mon nom, ben, je cherchais la perfection. J'enlève, j'écris, j'enlève, j'écris. Et à un moment donné, je me suis dit que, pourquoi pas, essayer de, euh, dans ces chassidas, euh, dans euh, aussi ces khalifas, dans le fonctionnement de la communauté mouride, comment sortir les grandes lignes qui ont euh, quelque part, qui, qui sont le fondement de sa vision. Alors, la première chose que j'ai trouvée, c'est cette façon que Cheikh al avait d'éduquer, d'enseigner et d'apprendre ses disciples à être endurants. Alors, et là, j'ai euh, essayé de voir, avant Serine Touba, ce qui s'est passé dans nos communautés. Parce qu'avant Serine Touba, je dis souvent que l'éducation pour tous est l'œuvre de Serine Touba. Parce qu'avant Serine Touba, ce qu'on appelle les enfants de forgerons allaient dans les, dans les Tara, mais ils apprenaient juste euh, comment prier, Fatia, Falakhinasi, et après, ils vont rentrer chez eux, continuer le travail dans, euh, leur, euh, dans le, euh, la forgerie de leurs parents. Et donc, après 10 ans, 20 ans, 30 ans, ils vont remplacer leur père. Ça veut dire que le fils de forgeron devait automatiquement être forgeron. Maintenant, les, les, les sangs bleus, les bien-nés qu'on appelle chez nous Domi Sornin, c'était ceux-là qui allaient faire des études supérieures, des études qui vont euh, quelque part euh, continuer à apprendre le Coran. Et après, ils vont encore devenir les, les chefs religieux, les guides, et ainsi de suite. Et dans, presque depuis euh, l'avènement de la religion au Sénégal, donc la chose était entre les mains de certains. J'ai vu que dans la pensée, dans les actes posés par euh, Cheikh Hamad Bamba, il a réglé ce problème de l'éducation pour tous. C'est-à-dire qu'il n'y avait plus de euh, euh, différence entre les enfants, euh, euh, les bien-nés entre guillemets, et les autres enfants qui euh, venaient des, des, des ce qu'on appelle de ceux qui faisaient des, 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 en fait euh, les petites mains, quoi, ceux qui faisaient euh, un certain nombre de, de, de travail. Euh, euh, manuel. Et c'est pour cela que jusqu'à présent, il est rare de voir dans une autre communauté des castés devenir des chefs. Alors que dans la communauté mourite, on voit que des castés sont devenus des chefs. Et le fait de créer cette éducation pour tous et apprendre, apprendre, à, à, à enseigner les gens à être endurants dans le travail, accepter tout. Parce que une fois que tu es bien formé, parce que ce n'était pas simplement euh, l'enseignement, c'était l'enseignement, c'était l'éducation, c'était aussi de les apprendre à être endurants. Et là, je l'ai mis dans un concept, Al-Hamal, euh, 
que c'est là où j'ai mis ce, ce concept-là, c'est-à-dire chercher à élever, chercher une élévation spirituelle, et c'est là où, où j'ai mis ces, ces trois points-là. Après, j'ai travaillé sur un, un deuxième concept, euh, Kazboul Halal ou Talaboul Halal, c'est-à-dire recherche de, du licite, c'est-à-dire que être un mourut doit travailler, mais pas n'importe quel travail. Dans son travail, il doit travailler sur quelque chose de licite. Et, et là, ça a permis au mourut maintenant, il n'y avait pas de petit ou de grand job. Ce qui les intéressait, c'était de travailler sur quelque chose de licite. Même si les, les gens peuvent penser que c'est un petit job, ils savent qu'en persistant sur ce travail-là, ils vont atteindre leur objectif. Maintenant, quel que soit le travail que le mourut doit faire, selon le chef, c'est un travail qui doit être licite. Parce que euh, une fois que euh, euh, vous travaillez, ce n'est pas simplement pour vous, mais il y a, il y a toujours aussi une communauté en fait, qu'on doit appuyer derrière. La troisième chose, c'était euh, le, le quittement, ou la quittement, c'est-à-dire euh, le service rendu à la communauté et qui, qui à mon niveau, est euh, pour moi la, la chose la plus magnifique euh, qu'on voit dans la vision de Cheikh al Parce que chez nous, les universitaires, on dit souvent que l'universitaire a trois missions, l'enseignement, la recherche et rendre service à sa communauté. Et je me rappelle quand je suis tenu ma thèse, euh, euh, mon doyen Amadi Alidien me disait que je ne veux pas que tu sois un carriériste. Je sais que tu étais un garçon un tout petit peu doué euh, quand tu étais étudiant, mais une fois que tu es docteur, tu dois beaucoup produire, tu dois beaucoup écrire, tu dois participer à élever le niveau des Sénégalais parce que tu dois rendre service aux Sénégalais. Et là, il me dit, et là, ce mot-là, je le tiens, en fait, dans un livre de, de ton homonyme, c'est la rythme. Il faut comment commencer, parce que votre nom, c'est Khadim. Khadim, c'est vient de ce, de ce radical-là. Et donc, rendre service à la communauté. Parce que quand tu visites l'histoire de la pensée économique, euh, tu, tu, tu verras que euh, les libéraux, en fait, avec Adam Smith, qui a euh, développé ce qu'on appelle euh, euh, la main invisible même, hein, ou euh, le laisser faire, laisser passer, laisser aller, la responsabilité individuelle, chacun pour soi, Dieu pour tous. C'est-à-dire, on met l'individu au-dessus de la communauté. C'est ça la vision libérale. Les libéraux pensent que chacun pour soi. Donc, l'individu est au-dessus de la communauté. Maintenant, celui qui a euh, théorisé le laisser faire, laisser passer, laisser aller. Au Sénégal, même nos hommes politiques se réclament être des libéraux, des socialistes. Moi, je suis allé euh, à Londres pour chercher les, les first hand, les, 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 les travaux de première main d'Adam Smith. Parce que, euh, bon, en tant qu'un chercheur, moi, j'aime bien, quand je réfléchis sur quelque chose, au lieu de voir les interprétations, parce que interprétation sur interprétation, on change le sens, on y ajoute quelque chose, on y enlève. Je préfère aller voir les premiers travaux pour comprendre l'esprit qui gouvernait les, les, les décisions, les grands principes fixés par Adam Smith. Mais ce que les gens oublient de dire aussi, c'est que Adam Smith, entre guillemets, qui a théorisé le, 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 le libéralisme, il est mort douanier. C'est-à-dire, avant sa mort, il a même remis en cause sa propre théorie de laisser passer, laisser faire, laisser aller. Parce que quand tu demandes aux gens « Ouvrez vos frontières », qu'il y ait un échange euh, euh, parfait, une concurrence pure et parfaite, après, tu, ton dernier métier, c'est douanier, c'est-à-dire tu mettais en place des barrières pour euh, imposer des taxes à certains produits. Ça veut dire que lui qui théorisait même le libéralisme, il, à la fin, il ne croyait pas à, ce, à cette théorie-là. Et pourtant, jusqu'à présent, les gens se, se réclament de lui. Je suis allé voir aussi les travaux de première main de, 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 des socialistes de Marx euh, qui euh, ressemblent un tout petit peu euh, à, la, à la vision du Cher parce que Marx, comme euh, le Cher aussi, mettait la communauté au-dessus de l'individu. C'est pour ça qu'on les appelle le communisme. Mais là où il euh, y a une différence entre les Mourid et Marx, dans la pensée de Marx, il n'y avait pas de morale. Pour Marx, euh, les pauvres pouvaient s'organiser et arracher le pouvoir entre les mains des riches. Quand il te disait, euh, euh, prolétaire du monde, unissez-vous, l'idée c'était quoi Mais quand les gens se s'unissent, c'était pour arracher le pouvoir des mains 
des plus riches et c'est ce qui est passé en Union soviétique avec euh, le, le coup d'État jusqu'à la mort euh, du chat, euh, du star de, de, de l'Union soviétique. Parce que les gens pensaient que si on est pauvre, c'est parce que ce sont euh, nos dirigeants en fait, qui n'ont pas joué le jeu. Il faut arracher le pouvoir de leurs mains et à n'importe quel prix. Donc, il n'y avait pas de morale dans, dans, la, passée, dans la pensée de Marx. Euh, le, le plus grand économiste de tous les temps, d'après les économistes, c'est John Maynard Keynes. Alors, j'ai essayé de voir la pensée de John Maynard Keynes, qui était à mi-chemin entre les socialistes et les libéraux. C'est-à-dire, c'était 50% du libéralisme et 50% du socialisme. Chez les libéraux, la responsabilité est individuelle. Chez les socialistes, la responsabilité est collective. Chez les libéraux, c'est l'État gendarme, c'est-à-dire que l'État ne doit pas intervenir sur le jeu du marché. Chez les socialistes, tout appartient à l'État. Keynes est venu euh, couper euh, la poire en deux, c'est-à-dire, oui, je suis d'accord pour le marché, mais ce marché doit être régulé. On doit apporter, amener un arbitre dans le, dans le marché pour que l'arbitre euh, contrôle et siffle les coups francs et, 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 les, et les fautes. Alors, je suis allé pour comprendre cette pensée de, 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 de Keynes, mais après ce que j'ai trouvé, pourquoi Keynes était, voulait toujours chercher euh, le juste milieu, surtout, excusez-moi du terme, il était homosexuel, il n'était ni homme ni femme, c'est-à-dire qu'il était un libéral, mais il sortait avec le patron des travaillistes. Alors, tous les jours, le matin, il défendait le libéralisme. Le soir, comme il passait la nuit avec le patron du Parti travailliste d'Angleterre, il essaie de, de mettre du, 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 du lot, de l'eau dans son vin en disant « oui, j'ai dit ça, mais il faut qu'on qu pense au plus pauvre. Oui, il faut qu'on essaie, il faut, il faut qu'on essaie. » Et malheureusement, on a élagué euh, tout cela. Ceux qui ont écrit après lui ont fignolé encore sa, sa théorie, jusqu'à ce que sa théorie soit parfaite. Mais au début, c'était juste quelqu'un qui avait un problème. Alors, quand on vient maintenant euh, sur la pensée de Shiaoul Shiaoul Bamba, on voit que ce, ce service rendu à la communauté, ça permet aux mourides, à chaque fois qu'ils travaillent, au lieu de penser à leur propre personne, à leur à l'individu, ils cherchent toujours euh, la lumière, ils cherchent toujours à mettre la communauté au-dessus de tout. C'est-à-dire que chacun d'entre nous peut travailler à son côté, mais cherche toujours quelque chose à faire pour la communauté. C'est-à-dire que le fait de mettre la communauté au-dessus de tout, ce n'est pas simplement pour des intérêts bassement matériels, mais c'est un intérêt immatériel. Parce que je dis souvent que vous voyez beaucoup de chers mourir qui travaillent beaucoup, qui gagnaient beaucoup et, et, et qui, ne se, qui ne se préoccupent pas ou bien qui ne bénéficient pas de ces, de ces ressources financières. Je prends toujours l'exemple de Serine Salou et de Cher Salou et de beaucoup de, 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 de Mbake Mbake, mais qui peuvent gagner des milliards, mais qui vivent modestement. Pourquoi Mais tout ce qu'ils gagnent, c'est pour la communauté. Mais pourquoi on peut atteindre ce niveau de développement de, de la communauté, mettre la communauté au-dessus de l'individu Parce qu'il y a la quatrième chose que j'appelle dans mon livre, la Himma, ou ce que j'appelle aussi la volonté créatrice. C'est-à-dire que euh, quand un mourut veut quelque chose, avec cette détermination-là, il peut l'avoir. Et je pense qu'il y a des choses que les mourut ont, 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 ont créées depuis, euh, euh, depuis euh, euh, 1917, parce que quand on étudie chez Ahmed Bamba, on sent qu'à partir de 1915-1916, il y a un changement radical de, de, du colon qui, en tout cas, euh, créer des problèmes à Cheikh Mourou Bamba, mais à partir de 1915, avec les problèmes euh, 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 à Marseille, les Marseillais ne voulaient plus en fait, euh, du savon venant euh, de la Corée du Sud. Et vous voyez que euh, l'arachide qui venait du, du Sénégal était mieux à même euh, leur permettre de faire des savons de qualité. Donc, il fallait maintenant trouver un consensus, même mou, avec la communauté qui produisait plus. Et donc, c'est pour cela que ils ont commencé à euh, un tout petit peu euh, trouver avec le cher euh, des consensus minimum. Le cher aussi, ça lui a permis de lancer les grands travaux de la communauté. Parce que euh, de 
89. Je dis souvent, les gens parlent de 95. 95, c'est euh, ça, c'est la, la déportation. Mais les problèmes ont commencé en 1889. Donc, de 1889 presque à 1917, c'était compliqué pour le chien. Mais après, quand les gens ont vu que c est, c est, les mouris, ce sont des grands, très grands producteurs, il fallait trouver maintenant un consensus. Il fallait, il fallait trouver une stratégie pour leur permettre de, de produire et de vendre une grande partie de leur production euh, en fait, aux Français. Et euh, j'ai vu des, des fiches où les Français disaient que euh, ces mouris-là, ils sont tellement organisés que dans la production, euh, 45% c'est pour leur consommation, 55% c'était pour euh, l'exportation. Et quand les mouris ont commencé à exporter, ils ont commencé à avoir de la ressource, euh, en fait, des ressources. Et ces ressources-là, maintenant, ont permis à la communauté de commencer maintenant les grands travaux. Et ces grands travaux-là aussi ont été construits grâce à ce service rendu à la communauté. Et, et donc, euh, le CHIAR, en 1817-18, quand ont commencé les travaux de Ndiaré, allait demander à tous ces, euh, ces, ces grands disciples, à tous ces grands disciples euh, de contribuer pour la construction de la mosquée. Alors, il a, il a demandé à tous ces euh, grands disciples d'apporter 28 gourdes. Alors, quand on convertit 28 gourdes, parce qu'on disait que, bon, quand j'ai lu les, les rapports de la Banque centrale, on disait qu'en 1917 jusqu'en 1920, un gourde pouvait acheter 3 kilos de riz. Un gourde pouvait acheter 3 kilos de riz. Alors, si on prend même le riz le moins cher au Sénégal, euh, 3 kilos de riz euh, va tourner autour de 1500. Donc, 28 gourdes euh, pour chaque chair, ça tournait autour de 150 000. Alors, le chef disait aussi à ses euh, chers Mbambo disait à ses chers que oui, je peux construire euh, euh, la mosquée, mais je veux vous apprendre une stratégie qui va vous permettre de construire toutes vos infrastructures sans la mémise de l'Occident, sans la mémise de quelqu'un d'autre, parce que, euh, comme le disent les Wolofs, « Koulou Monel Sanyal ». Et je pense que les Mourides ont utilisé là, cette stratégie pour construire la mosquée de, de Ndiarem, pour construire euh, le, la, le chemin de fer du Rebel Touba, pour construire la mosquée de Touba, pour construire la ville de Touba, pour construire la mosquée de Massali Kuljinan et pour construire l'université. Toujours la même stratégie. Et pourtant, on nous dit que cette stratégie qu'on appelle euh, euh, le crowdfunding a été créée par les Canadiens en 1992. Or, la communauté a toujours utilisé cette stratégie-là depuis 1917. Donc, pour moi, c'est un travail même que nous devons faire pour justifier que cette stratégie de financement nous appartient depuis euh, 1917. Mais, mais ce qu'il y a de plus extraordinaire aussi, quand euh, je l'ai amené dans le livre, le fait que à sa disparition en 1927, le constat qu'on a fait, c'est qu'à chaque fois qu'on est en période de crise mondiale, c'est là où les mouris tirent à leur épingle du jeu. C'est comme si, quand il y a une crise, il, il, il se multiplie par deux, la production se multiplie par deux. Alors que le mot « résilience qu », bon, quand je le parlais dans mon, dans mon, dans mon livre, quelqu'un un intellectuel m'a dit, mais pourquoi tu utilises le mot « résilience » Mais il a fallu que la COVID... Euh, soit euh, en fait euh, nous perturbe que les gens ont commencé à utiliser le mot résilience or ce mot résilience là mais c'est un mot aussi typiquement mourir parce qu'on a commencé la mosquée de Ndiarim juste la fin de la première guerre mondiale on a commencé la construction du chemin de fer juste aussi le début de la crise des années 30 et, et parfois même j'avais du mal à comprendre parce que j'encadrais un Canadien qui travaillait sur euh, euh, Kharnoubi de Serim Moussaka parce qu'il me disait que le professeur Moussaka le professeur Moussaka, j'ai cherché dans toutes les universités le professeur Moussaka ben, après c'est à la fin que je suis que non, il parle de, de, de Serim Moussaka parce que nous autres les Sénégalais euh, bon, vous nous parlez de professeur Moussaka parce que lui il dit que c'est le seul, un des seuls Africains subsahariens qui a écrit sur les effets de la crise des années 30 euh, dans les pays en développement parce qu'il chantait, mais il a capté ce qui se passait pendant la crise des années 30. Mais c'était extrêmement difficile ce que Seri Moussa a chanté. Et mais c'est en, en ces moments difficiles que les Mourides ont déclenché la construction du chemin de fer euh, euh, Touba, euh, parce que le, le Blanc ne voulait pas aussi, ne voulait pas mettre sa main 
exemple, la construction de la mosquée, et sachant que le, le, le matériau lourd devait, ne pouvait pas prendre euh, les, les camions, il n'y avait pas de certains euh, gros camions, il fallait construire une route, et donc il fallait mettre le bâton dans les rues, euh, rues des Mourides. Il avait même demandé à Serge Moussafa que ceux qui vont construire la mosquée, ce ne sont pas, vous n'allez pas les considérer comme des disciples. Ce sont des indigènes et donc qui sont sous mon contrôle. Vous allez payer chaque travailleur de 3 à 15 gourdes. Seri Moussafa est d'accord. Il a demandé à Seri Moussafa que tous les travailleurs doivent manger tous les jours de la viande. Seri Moussafa est d'accord. Mais comme le, le blanc ne connaissait pas la, 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 la rythme, le service rendu à la communauté, il, le, le soir, il payait tous les travailleurs 3, de 3 à 15 gourdes. Seigneur Moussafa à, 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 à 30 mètres, tout le monde revenait pour lui donner à dire ce que le blanc euh, venait, venait de le payer. Donc, Seigneur Moussafa a donné l'argent au blanc après récupérer encore cet argent-là, parce que ce service rendu à la communauté, un blanc ne peut pas comprendre cela. Donc, et je pense que cette stratégie que nous avons et qui nous a permis de construire, et quand j'ai mis aussi à jour euh, la construction de, du rail, euh, Durbel Touba, ça tournait autour de 5 millions de gourdes autant et donc qui, qui tourne autour de 10 millions de gourdes du mois, ce qui donne aujourd'hui 50 milliards de, de francs CFA. Et les Mourites l'ont financé. Et là, maintenant, les perspectives, je, je me dis qu'on l'a fait avec euh, euh, Massali Kuldinan, on l'a fait avec l'université, mais il nous faut réfléchir maintenant comment on va utiliser cette université-là pour construire cette ville chanté par Serine Touba dans Matlaboul Fauzeni, parce que ce que Serine Touba a dit sur Matlaboul Fauzeni, c'est quelque chose que nous devons réaliser. Pour moi, c'est une question de génération. Si cette génération, pas, cette génération ne la réalise pas, une autre génération va le faire. Et on a, je dis souvent, des, des, on a, il faut qu'on ouvre des canaux sur le plan politique, sur le plan... En tout cas, on a des stratégies à, à mettre en place pour utiliser cette université, pour montrer euh, ce que l'homme noir cherchait, parce que l'homme noir, la colonisation, l'esclavage a quelque part réduit tellement nos, nos compatriotes qu'ils pensent que l'homme noir doit toujours suivre. On nous a tellement fragilisés que il faut, j'ai beaucoup de respect pour tous les tarifs et tout, mais on pense qu'on ne peut pas créer quelque chose. L'homme noir doit toujours suivre. Et ce que le chef a montré, il est intéressant, je, un des plus grands économistes euh, gabonais, il porte le nom de euh, Cheikh Amadou Bamba, il s'appelle Bambangali, même si c'est un chrétien, parce que lui, il connaît sur une toile le révolutionnaire. Et donc, est-ce qu'on ne doit pas euh, commencer à réfléchir dans nos universités pour ouvrir complètement la communauté, mais aussi permettre dans cette université-là, à former des gens qui vont prendre le devenir de la ville de Touba. Parce qu'on ne peut pas, euh, euh, on n'ignore pas qu'il y a un problème d'eau à Touba, il y a un problème d'assainissement à Touba, il y a un problème de voirie, mais toutes ces choses-là, c'est des choses que maintenant, dans nos univers, dans notre université, qu'on peut, qu peut régler pour permettre à la communauté, au-delà au de, 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 de la mosquée, au-delà des, des infrastructures spirituelles, on est maintenant dans les infrastructures purement pédagogiques. Il nous appartient maintenant d'entrer dans le monde purement économique. Voilà en grande ligne ce que je voulais dire sur le document que j'avais produit. Merci, Dr. Diane. C'était très intéressant et très exhaustif. Et, et euh, je, je retiens vos quatre euh, piliers et euh, le fait que euh, vous pouvez. Vous, le hymne, l'importance de la hymne est tellement capitale aujourd'hui avec um, la manière dont les libéraux dirigent le pays et la manière dont les mourides um, sont en train de montrer que la communi communauté peut faire plus que n'importe quelle um, source de, uh, de funding. Et, et je ne sais pas le, le crowdfunding Uh, et d'un concept um, de la Mouridia, ce qui est uh, aussi extrêmement intéressant um, pour moi. La question dont je voulais um, vous poser, c'est de, de savoir comment réconcilier le libéralisme qu'on voit aujourd'hui, qui est en train de gangréner um, 
la face visible du mouridisme et le hymne dont vous, vous avez parlé qui, uh, que, que le chef a, a mis dans la culture du mouride. Merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup Sidi. Et, et je pense que euh, l'université va nous permettre de jouer même sur les mots. Moi, je dis que nous pouvons mettre en place notre doctrine, trouver les mots, euh, euh, les mots qui n'ont rien à voir avec euh, euh, cette version libérale qu'on veut nous imposer. Parce que quand on parle de, du, du libéralisme, ça veut dire qu'on on, on perd notre humanité. Parce que si c'est la course, hein, c'est la course au, au profit. Alors que le profit joue un rôle extrêmement important dans, dans, dans la vision libérale. Or que chez nous, les mourides, le, c'est le travail qui est plus important que, que le profit. Le travail est plus important que la richesse. Parce que chez le mourid, le travail, c'est une forme de prière. Quand le mourid travaille, il prie. Et dans sa prière, donc, euh, le, fait que, le fait de travailler, ça il augmente en fait euh, ses prières, alors que euh, la richesse qui est considérée comme les euh, libéraux, euh, comme une finalité, chez nous, c'est un moyen qui nous permet de réaliser quelque chose. À partir de ce moment, il y a toujours quelque chose, pour moi, une richesse un peu plus importante que cette richesse euh, euh, chantée par les libéraux, à savoir euh, l'argent, la liquidité. Nous, c'est la richesse spirituelle et la richesse sociale, c'est-à-dire que dans la communauté, combien de personnes tu as aidé dans, le, dans, dans, dans ta famille, combien de personnes tu as aidé Comment tu as, Qu'est-ce que tu as fait pour, ta, pour, ta, pour la ville de Cheikh Ahmed Bamba Comment ainsi de suite Le fait que un jour, je faisais un cours à l'université et, et de, malheureusement, parfois, on n'a que 30 heures pour des, des amphithéâtres de 2000, 2500 places. À la fin du cours, il restait presque six heures à faire. Malheureusement, j'ai épuisé mes 30 heures et l'université voulait qu'on arrête. Parce qu'un étudiant mourut est venu pour dire que mes profs donnent une chute mal six heures qui descendent bien le dimanche. Le fait de me demander au moins de me sacrifier le dimanche, au moins pour chute mal les, les six heures, j'étais dans l'obligation de le faire. Parce que je ne pouvais pas dormir sans faire les 6 heures un dimanche, quelle que soit la, 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 voilà, la situation, c'était une obligation pour moi. Mmh. Et après, le dimanche, quand j'ai fait le cours, beaucoup d'étudiants qui n'étaient pas mourus, d'autres qui n'étaient même pas musulmans, me disent, mais comment quelqu'un, un professeur, un étudiant peut lui demander une fois une chose sans, 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 oui, sans débat, tu acceptes c'est que vous ne, comprenez pas, vous ne comprenez pas le mot qu'il a utilisé. C'est, ce, n'est, ce n'est plus un problème entre lui et moi, c'est un problème entre le mot et moi, parce que moi, je m'appelle Radu, et donc quelqu'un ne peut pas me demander de rendre service et que je refuse de le faire. Je, c'est pour cela que maintenant, cette richesse-là, il n'y a pas plus important que ça. Notre richesse spirituelle, pour moi, c'est quelque chose, pour répondre à la question même de Chafatma, qui nous dit que ce modèle que nous... Est-ce que, mais c'est ce que l'Afrique cherche. Aujourd'hui, pour moi, il n'y a, a pas meilleure chose dans le monde que de rendre service. Allez-y au Sénégal. Dans n'importe quelle direction, si on ne te connaît pas, on ne te rend pas service. Allez-y voir tout ce que tu veux. Les gens, ne rend, les gens ne rendent pas service. Ou bien ils attendent quelque chose du service. Alors que chez, chez nous, nous autres les mourites, ce que Sérintoua nous a demandé de faire, c'est de rendre service à la communauté. Même si le Sénégal commençait à réfléchir sur comment rendre service à la communauté. Et je me rappelle euh, un jour, un, un responsable, au responsable politique m'a demandé d'entrer dans, une, dans un gouvernement. Je lui dis que ce pas là, mais moi, je n'ai pas ce temps-là. Il ne revenait, il n'en revenait pas. Oui, mais non, tu ne peux pas être ça, tu ne peux pas être... Je dis, mais non, ça ne m'intéresse pas. Parce que je ne peux absolument rien changer. Parce que je sais comment vous fonctionnez. Mais moi, ce que je pense est que tant que vous, vous, faites, vous, faites, vous, avez, vous prenez ce chemin-là, vous allez droit vers le mur. Et je pense que nous avons les réponses à nos propres problèmes. Mais il nous faut sortir de Serintouba, de ce carcan-là, parce que les mouris aussi ont pris Serintouba, je ne dis pas, quelque part, ont on fait de Serintouba juste un marabout, alors que Serintouba, c'était un grand intellectuel. Je ne, vois pas, je, ne, je, je ne vois pas au monde un intellectuel aussi productif. Mais quelqu'un qui 
en même temps est le meilleur enseignant, le meilleur éducateur, le meilleur écrivain, le meilleur décentralisateur, le, mais sur tous les domaines, il est le meilleur. Mais si on, nous, on, 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 on se focalise juste sur le marabout, c'est une perte pour le Sénégal, c'est une perte pour l'Afrique. Et on est aujourd'hui dans une mondialisation où on demande à chacun d'apporter quelque chose dans ce monde d'échange-là. Moi, je dis souvent que nous pouvons apporter quelque chose. Maintenant, il faut que euh, qu'il soit Tidjan Khadr, qu'on voit plus sur Ritouba, simplement comme au marabout. Oui, après, chacun peut être Tidjan Mourif Khadr, mais il faut venir sur le marché avec l'intellectuel que vous avez en Afrique. Quand je disais à un homonyme Bamangali que quand Sérine Touba disait que la couleur de la peau ne saurait être cause de l'idiotie d'un homme ou de sa mauvaise compréhension, mais c'était dans les années 1888-1887. Mais après, on, on dit que oui, les, 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 les véritables pères de la négritude, c'est Senghor et qui l'ont dit en 1934 parce qu'ils ont fait un détour en France. Alors lui, il était ici au Baol et il, il, il voulait montrer, rehausser encore l'homme noir qui a vécu la colonisation, qui a vécu l'esclavage. Et donc, pourquoi on ne réfléchit pas même sur la diplomatie de la communauté, permettre à la communauté de s'ouvrir avant même en Europe, en Afrique L'Afrique, il n'y a, a pas une personne forte. Les gens se... Je discutais avec des Sud-Africains que j'avais invités à Touba. Mais leur problème, c'est même le concept de Ubuntu, devant moi, ils l'ont remis en cause. Nous, on met des enfants, mais vous, quand, quand, quand vous voyez des personnes avec le, tout, tout ça, euh, ils ne peuvent pas comprendre cela. Ils disent que mais, mais c'est ça le Ubuntu. Je suis parce que nous sommes. Et ils chantent ensemble, ils font tout ensemble. Mais, mais, mais si vous gardez ça ici, dans un endroit que personne ne connaît, mais comment on, vous, on va profiter de chercher à Ahmadou Bamba Et je pense que donc, tout le travail de la communauté, c'est d'essayer de déprivatiser ce Touba, de ne pas voir Cheikh Ahmed Bambo comme simplement un chef religieux, mais de voir en Cheikh Ahmed Bambo un des plus grands intellectuels que le monde a fait. Absolument. Vraiment, merci. Uh, Cheikh Fatma, uh, je, uh, voulez-vous voulez -vous intervenir sur uh, le sujet Ok. Ok. Uh, donc, docteur uh, Khadima Madjen, vraiment merci pour uh, cet, uh, ce bien exposé et uh, la réponse um, à, à aux questions. Il y a Ahmed qui veut intervenir. Uh, Allez-y, Ahmed. Oui, merci, Sidi. Uh, 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 je vous remercie pour m'avoir donné la parole. Mais avant de poser une petite question et faire une petite contribution, je voudrais remercier quand même. Uh, ceux qui nous ont précédés ici, euh, qui ont fait des brillants exposés, le professeur Cher Babou, euh, que je salue au passage, euh, le professeur Abdulrahman, et saluer, me réjouir de, du brillant exposé de notre cadet, euh, le professeur Armando Bambadiagne. Je vois que euh, ce sont nos cadets qui, ont, qui tiennent le flambeau très haut, parce que moi-même, je suis ici de cette même faculté, euh, peut-être des années bien euh, auparavant. Euh, euh, je vous ai précédé là-bas, bien sûr, mais je, vois, je me réjouis de voir que vraiment, euh, la faculté produit toujours d'excellents étudiants et, et ça se voit. Ma question ici euh, que je voudrais avoir, et je pense que quelqu'un l'a d'ailleurs... Euh, un peu brossé, je crois que c'est cher fan, euh, euh, cher Mbake. Euh, ne pensez-vous pas que ce modèle puisse être appliqué au niveau de nos États Parce que si vous vous regardez aujourd'hui, le modèle le plus achevé de ce modèle, euh, de ce modèle mauvais, c'est, euh, je donne un exemple, c'est Touba Chikanam. Euh, tu vois, chez Tikanam, ça s'articule autour du principe du crowdfunding, je pense. Et vous voyez comment ils euh, initient des projets et réalisent ces projets sur la base du crowdfunding. Moi, je me dis, peut-être nos États, et comme vous l'avez dit, je suis totalement d'accord avec vous, euh, je vois que nos États butent sur tous ces modèles. Euh, on ne sait pas sur quoi nous nous basons, sur du néolibéralisme, sur du keynésianisme, il y a du tout en fait. 
Si vous regardez, on a des politiques, des grands travaux ici, il y a du, du néolibéralisme, une petite dose de libéral. En, en fait, on mélange en tout. Mais on, on voit que nous avons toujours des limites, nous allons droit au mur et nous n'allons nulle part. N'est-il pas temps d'explorer de, ce modèle, cette, cette vision euh, du crowdfunding que dit, On s'est dit, nous, voilà nous Sénégalais, nous Africains, donnons-nous un time frame, 10 ans par exemple, et faisons des investissements dans des domaines précis cibles, par exemple la santé, l'éducation, les infrastructures. Euh, faisons comme les mots, disons moi, bon, euh, Donnons-nous une clé de répartition, 55%, 45% du budget, 55%, 55% pour toutes les dépenses sur d'investissement et 45% pour les dépenses de fonctionnement. Et allouons ces, 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 ces dépenses euh, dans des grands projets tels que la santé, l'éducation, les infrastructures. Et, et, et donnons-nous, et faisons ça après chaque année, disons une année, santé, éducation pour le budget, l'autre année, on cible d'autres secteurs, et ainsi de suite. Pendant 10 ans, et on va voir ce que ça va donner. Et régler, et moi je pense que si on le fait, on pourra régler d'une part euh, les problèmes que nous, rencontrons, que nous rencontrons dans, dans la santé, régler le problème de, de la santé pour une bonne fois pour toutes, l'éducation une bonne fois pour toutes, peut-être pas les infrastructures, mais au moins cibler ces effets. Ne pensez-vous pas que ce serait un modèle que nous pouvons explorer et, euh, et à quel en seraient les résultats Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, euh, Ahmed. Je pense que c'est le combat. C'est le combat de, de, de nous tous. Et je pense que l'idée, c'est de même chercher une masse critique. Euh, il y a de cela trois semaines, l'État du Sénégal a, a voulu euh, vendre une partie de, de l'hôpital Aristide Le Dantec. À l'université, j'ai lancé une stratégie. J'ai dit aux collègues qu'on va essayer de cotiser pour acheter euh, les, 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 les 30 hectares et les, les 3, 3 hectares euh, et pour, le, pour le redonner aussi à l'État du Sénégal. Après, le ministre m'a appelé pour me dire que non, l'État va arrêter la vente. Pour vous dire que jusqu'à présent, euh, le problème est que on n'a pas encore une masse critique de mourir dans les cercles de décision. Pour moi, ce qui, ce qui, ce qui manque en tout petit peu, c'est ça. Aujourd'hui, euh, tant bien que mal, les mourides commencent à écrire et euh, euh, on commence à dégager la voie. Ça commence à être de plus en plus clair. Et tout va se tout va euh, Maintenant, c'est une version réelle de cette vision-là. Euh, C'est-à-dire qu'on dépense moins, on a des qualités meilleures. On dépense moins, on a des qualités meilleures. Mais le seul problème que nous avons jusqu'à présent, c'est qu'on n'a pas encore décolonisé l'homme politique, l'homme sénégalais. L'homme politique sénégalais, jusqu'à présent, essaie de ressembler à l'homme politique français, l'homme politique occidental. Les gens ne croient pas que, même quand tu fais des études dans les Dara, on ne te considère même pas comme un intellectuel, on te considère comme un arabisant. C'est-à-dire qu'il y a un effort qu'on qu doit faire pour décoloniser, euh, ramener nos hommes politiques dans, dans, dans le monde euh, où nous sommes, où un monde de compétition, où on ne peut pas utiliser le cheval de l'autre pour le dépasser. Et, et je pense que euh, c'est pour cela que euh, je dis souvent qu'il nous faut déprivatiser ce Touba. Arrêtons de prendre ce Touba simplement comme un marabout. Mais une fois qu'on commence à le présenter comme un intellectuel, que les gens étudient, et qu'on accepte que les gens discutent, mais soient même en désaccord avec les écrits de Shahmoud Bamba. Je pense qu'une fois qu'on accepte cette version de Shahmoud Bamba, là, je ne dis pas au Sénégal, mais en Afrique, on ne peut pas trouver mieux que le chef. Ce n'est pas possible. Mais le malheur est que c'est nous autres les mourus qui voulons garder le chef comme euh, marabout. Mais moi, je me dis que si on déprivatise le chef, qu'on le met maintenant comme un, un, un héros toute l'Afrique et qu'on montre tout ce que le chef a fait parce que j'ai je fais, je fais plus de 15 pays en Afrique, mais à chaque fois qu'est-ce qu'on te dit, mais quand tu parles je fais mes, parfois des, des, des conférences dans, à chaque fois que j'enseigne dans une université africaine, je, je fais une conférence sur Charmot Bamba mais le problème c'est quoi après une semaine nous on tape sur le net 
on tape chez Amadou Bamba, bon, on voit juste des, des chansons, quoi. On voit des chansons, on voit des chansons. On n'a pas encore l'habitude de voir des productions scientifiques. Et, et c'est ça, c'est, c'est, c'est là où les choses vont changer. Mais il faut qu'on accepte, nous, que Serine Touba, c'est un grand intellectuel. Mais tant qu'on le prend comme un grand marabout, oui, pour nous, c'est un grand marabout, mais pour l'Afrique, ça doit être un grand intellectuel. Et je pense que c'est le seul chemin qui va nous, qui va nous mettre maintenant dans cette liberté, parce qu'il nous a libérés de toutes les contingences politiques, économiques et, et sociales. Ouais, et je crois que pour le monde, on, sait, euh, il, il doit être, euh, on doit le regarder comme un intellectuel, euh, un architecte, euh, un géomètre, euh, um, euh, <coughs> um, um, quelqu'un quelqu'un qui, 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 qui regarde les, les astres et tout cela. Ah, Serine Bay, ah, vous avez la parole. Oui, merci, ah, euh, Sidi. Euh, euh, merci, Dr. Euh, Hadim, Hadim Bamba. Euh, euh, et je vous rejoins là-bas euh, quand vous disiez que euh, quand on tape sur l'Internet, on, on voit seulement euh, que des racides et qu'un jour, je pense qu'à euh, une connexion pour le, euh, le mosquée, on a dit que euh, on des marabouts, je pense que c'est Seigneur Blad, je ne me rappelle plus, mais il a dit que euh, ce n'est pas les racides, les mille Gizbou ou bien les mille Moaïbou qui vont, qui vont euh, construire la mosquée, mais... Euh, 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 plutôt que les, les à dire euh, ce, qu'on, ce qu'on est en train de collecter. Mais j'ai une question, c'est une paradoxe ou bien je me suis un peu euh, confus quand vous disiez que euh, on vous a appelé sur, la, euh, sur le monde politique et vous avez refusé parce que vous n'avez pas le temps alors que vous disiez aussi que euh, dans le milieu politique politique, il n'y a pas assez de mourites. Cela veut dire qu'il n'y a pas assez de gens qui sont comme vous et qui ont les bagages mourites euh, pour euh, gouverner ou, ou bien pour faire la bonne politique. Euh, je, je pense que c'est notre problème. Euh, parce que moi aussi, euh, je suis dans ce sac, mais tant qu'il n'y a pas des de, de gens qui sont assez osés pour aller euh, vers la politique pour prendre les devants et que euh, tout parce que si, si, si tant qu'on n'a pas fait ça on va ça va être la même on ne peut pas faire la même chose et, et euh, vouloir avoir de, de, de résultats différents parce que euh, c'est eux qui nous dirigent euh, avec leurs lois leurs règles donc ils vont nous dicter ce qui va se passer Tant que les intellectuels comme vous n'osent pas aller euh, dans ce milieu, euh, et ça demande du sacrifice, bien sûr. Mais il faut que euh, des, les intellectuels qui sont euh, euh, conscientisés doivent rejoindre euh, le, le monde politique pour régler ce problème. Je pense que euh, c'est à ce niveau. Et que je, 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 euh, je suis... Euh, je comprends très bien que c'est très difficile euh, de vous mélanger euh, avec d'autres gens qui, qui ont d'autres mentalités, qui euh, peut-être euh, qui n'ont pas euh, euh, la foi, mais euh, je pense que c'est là où on doit euh, mettre le doigt. C'est là où, on, excusez-moi, mon français n'est plus bon, mais je pense que vous comprenez ce que je veux, je veux, je veux dire. Merci. En tout cas, je suis, je suis, je suis parfaitement d'accord avec toi, Sindhaï. Hein. Bon, le problème est que, euh, je, je dis souvent que, euh, et on le dit souvent hein, avec euh, d'autres collègues, qu'on n'aime pas la façon où les gens f- font la politique au Sénégal. Parce que jusqu'à présent, on a la culture de s'enrichir sur la chose politique. Et je me rappelle, euh, en 2015, 2016, il y a un projet euh, extrêmement important que le président nous avait confié, alors avec un budget. Alors, on a, on a fait le projet, tout, tout, tout. On lui a donné euh, les résultats, présentation, tout, 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 tout. Alors, on a dépensé 23 du budget. Alors, je suis venu lui, lui, lui donner euh, le reste. Il me dit ça, c'est quoi Je dis non, on est, on est des intellectuels quand même. On a, 
on n'a on a pas besoin pour réfléchir d'acheter des voitures, d'aller à l'hôtel et ainsi de suite. Donc, on a fait le travail de ça. Mais non, ça, c'est quoi? Je dis que non. Nous, on a utilisé 23% du budget. Je dis que donc, ça veut dire que cet argent-là, donc, tu vas le mettre dans. Je dis que, monsieur le président, on ne peut pas l'utiliser, ce n'est pas notre argent. Donc, on faisait un travail, on l'a fait. Et donc, ça, c'est notre travail. On dit que non, ça, pour la première fois de ma vie, je vois <rire> des gens qui vont. Je dis que non, mais donc. Il faut, il, faut entrer dans la, il faut entrer dans la chose politique. Je dis que je vais changer. Parce que comme personne ne t'a, re, ne t'a remis de la monnaie, donc une fois que j'ai fait la pluie, je ne vais jamais vous remettre la monnaie de ta pièce. Et donc, pour moi, c'est, 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 ça montre le problème de l'homme politique sénégalais. Parce qu'on pense qu'on fait la politique pour s'enrichir. Et, et le jour où, où on, on aura cette masse critique qui pense qu'on doit faire la politique pour changer les choses, et je pense que ça, ça va être beaucoup plus simple. Ça va être beaucoup plus simple parce que, bon, dans ma, dans ma tête, moi, je dis que même si je gagne 10 000 francs par, par mois, je suis un économiste, je vais essayer de trouver, de régler mes problèmes avec mes 10 000 francs. C'est-à-dire qu'une somme d'argent qui ne m'appartient pas, je ne peux plus. Ce n'est même pas possible. Ce n'est même pas, je ne suis pas... Euh, voilà, je, on ne m'a pas éduqué comme ça. Et euh, le professeur Moussafa Souran fait à son âme quand j'étais président du, du foyer avec l'actuel maire de Thiès, Baba Kertiouk. On a eu un problème comme ça. Les, les, dans le gouvernement d'Abdoulaye Ward, il y avait une grève de 56 jours. On a voulu nous corrompre. Il les a dit que ne, ne parlez pas avec Khadib Baba, ne parlez pas avec Baba Kertiouk. Parce que ces deux garçons-là, Dieu n'a pas créé quelqu'un qui peut les corrompre. Et, et, et ce qui me faisait plaisir, c'était qu'il nous disait que. Moi, je suis un petit-fils de Serif Touba. Vous, vous êtes des jeunes, vous êtes des mourides et, et, et que vous, 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 je ne dis pas que vous détestez l'argent, mais le fait que même vos camarades disent que non, il ne faut pas, quand on met le il faut pas mettre Khadib Bamba et, et, et Babakar, ça me rassure. Et, mais malheureusement, cette masse critique-là, tant qu'on ne l'a pas, tu es dans une équipe, tu es obligé de faire comme eux ou bien d'être en marche de la chose. Et, et c'est ça qui est, qui, qui est dommage. Et je me dis que un jour ou l'autre, on va avoir cette masse critique-là. Et là, mais vraiment, on va dépasser, dépasser la politique politicienne. Parce que tant qu'on ne présente pas Cheikh Ahmed Bamba dans le monde, pour qu'on puisse voir l'homme qu'il est, l'homme que Cheikh Ahmed Bamba incarne, c'est, c'est, c'est cet homme-là, euh, l'Afrique ne va pas changer. Parce que jusqu'à présent, l'Afrique nourrit un complexe. Mais rarement, et je n'ai jamais vu un mourir qui nourrit un sentiment de complexe, d'infériorité. Parce que nous pensons que nous, nous avons la, la, le meilleur homme, le meilleur guide. Et donc, à partir du moment où nous avons ce ring Touba, on n'a pas ce problème avec le reste. Mais, mais malheureusement, ça dit qu'on n'a pas encore atteint cette masse critique. Parce qu'en matière de, de combat, il y a toujours une masse critique que nous devons avoir pour changer les choses. Mais je sais que, euh, en tout cas, de toute façon, ça va changer. Parce que la, la politique sénégalaise, en ce moment, on sait très bien que c'est la fin d'une d'une époque, c'est la fin d'une façon de faire. On ne peut pas continuer à être euh, quelque part euh, des, é- des éternels retardataires. Et vraiment, ça me, ça, ça me fait très mal. Machallah, machallah. C'est cher. Euh, ok, salam alaikum. C'est une série manglée de nous ou de Santo. Je me suis dit que je en retard. Le professeur Charente Baboudi a exposé la, la Dougou. Il y a fait le bon bar, bar échangé am qui digne de professeur Charente Babou, il y a aussi une série avec professeur Benet Biron Def Abdrahman Wah, donc qui anglais. Les mots qui ont été déglu, refait le colol, moi, moi, am solo y tam par rapport à cirque diaspora bi avec avec Yonwi, moi, le compliqué leur hamne, surtout le jeune qui est là aujourd'hui, avec n'importe qui hamne du bon en qui diaspora bi toujours dans mes wahne yon wil risque yu rey gëna am actuellement moy disons danaka toute une communauté mourit bo xamné mi ngi sosu ci bitim rew ci diaspora bi te suñ yéxé ñak leen donc yon wi deful ben effort pratiquement pour dimbulé wayjuru ñi nga xamné ñi ngi judo ci diaspora bi pour que ndaw ñoñu mëna mëna dess ci communauté bi du ay outil du ay outil didactique du 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 ay jumtukay du ay 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 école ki dar yu moderne ci rew diaspora bi wala ci touba danaka dal wajuluñ dara ngir gëna gëna deugeural disons éducation bi way jur xalé yoyu di def ci ñom communauté bi accompagner len ba nga xamantene donc duñ len duñ len ñak lolu yakarna enjeu yu reere le ci 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 futur yu yoonu yoonu mourid defi yi gëna mag ci le bok 
kon di rafetlu bu wax liñ ci jotta liñ ci jotta wax leneen limay intervenir itam muy jëm ci li professeur Khadim Bamba Diagne docteur Khadim Bamba don wax legi yakarna maître mo bi bi limu wax muy masse critique bobu moy moy li ci ëpp solo euh masse critique bobu je crois que c'est cette masse critique là qui qu'il faut qu'il faut mettre l'accent et je crois que pour atteindre cette masse critique euh, je, je pense qu'il faut qu'il faut pas attendre il faut il faut travailler à, à atteindre cette masse critique euh, c'est-à-dire en mettant en place par exemple des think tanks en réfléchissant euh, entre intellectuels sur comment atteindre cette masse critique comment disons atteindre les sphères d'influence comment faire en sorte que les mourides qui ont le talent et qui ont l'éducation euh, mourides nécessaire puissent accéder aux, aux sphères de décision. Je crois que euh, il faut mener la réflexion euh, de fond à travers des think tanks etc pour pouvoir atteindre cette masse critique. Je crois que c'est extrêmement important aujourd'hui de, de réfléchir à ça. Euh, je vous remercie. Jeff, Cheikh Fadma xaram ma jox chebamba dernier mot bla ñuy tej da nga nek da nga nek am mida alhamdullilah alhamdullilah xamna ni li serigne jox rek lolu mom combat la bo xamanteni ñi ngi ci nak ñi ngi ñi ngi ci ñi ngi da ngay waxtane sama xarit yu bari ma leen ñu bax ñep buñu buñu dawé li bax ci ñep dina met lolu ci ñi nga xamanteni seen loxo jotul seen ginaaw te rew mi dafa tollu bo xamanteni neena xeyna politique do ko mën ndax te say activité day xaw bari mais il nous faut influencer les choses dama bi non ben livre en 2017 comment voter les sénégalais maison de richam neena c'est le livre le plus vendu au sénégal neena ma chaque année luñ ci gën mu jeex man ndax sénégal politique lañu dundé guddis politique lañu dundé ba ci te mëna man ni ko bindé ba nit ni seen xalat yépp moy ku lir livre khadim bamba na la def gis khadim bamba na la def ba man li waji wax mom man ci mom man ci ag mëna man ko nak parce que dañu cupid sénégal ñi defé politique fam cupid té xaw bari cupid mena de politique gis mo lu ko gën ci aduna mais il faut que ñu dem ba démystifier démystifier wutu alal ci politique mais mu nek lo xamanteni pour man suñu yoon yoon mourid man na am lu bari lu mu ci changer man na ndax kenn ku ci nek ñun am nga kilifa go xamanteni rus nga wala bop limay wax cheba man sama tour la rus sama am nga xam rus na ko def ndax xarit bi ko tuddu lo xamanteni mom jom na ko def sama adul yoy nak jikko yoy nga xamanteni ku ci nek mourid sa keur yoy ngay indalé il faut que mu mu dugg ci politique ba ñu nit ñi mu nekkat lo xamanteni yefi yefi balal yefi nit ku bax la le sénégal mënu soppé ko tant que jëlu ñu li sëriñ touba jangalé di def ko ben viatique bo xamné koy appliquer parce que lolu mo ñu mëna permettre dans le continent bis bu ñu génné du ñu génné di niro kèn dañu génné dañu indalé parce que mondialisation bi ñu jël il faut que ngam lo indalé il faut ngam lo yobalé man fiñ nekk ni fepp fu may dem j'ai écrit 5 livres mais fepp fu may dem sama livre mo bind serigne touba lay bok ndax lolou rek lay wax lo xamanteni keneen kuma jakkal di nga taxaw deglu ma xamni li li ni yow mi xamako bokul ci li nga bind mais yeneen li nga bind yeb teewru des jeux sur la banque ni contradiction yeneen ni ngeen koy defé ñun ni lañ koy defé mais boy wax ci serigne touba dañuy taxaw day melni ñom jang bu bess ñu jang ba wa wa bordo kèr ci neena ma ren luñ bëgg moy nga jangal ñu la vision économique de ce livre bëggu ñu nga jangal ñu mëna ñëw professeur bi ñu jangal les principes économiques mais ce que nous voulons moy les principes économiques nga xamanteni dang ko tirer dans les écrits de Cheikh Mamadou Bamba ku ci nek nak ci ñun xeyna amna liggéey bo ci bo ci bo ci fété ñun domaine bi ñu nek mo euh tamay nan souvent kuma bañ ma interdire université de Dakar ma jangalé fa livre bi parce que dañu bokku ci programme bi damé téla jéxal sama programme pour am 9 heures de temps yo xamanteni damay nan comme sama programme jéxal nak luma neex lay def dama lay étudiant nak semaine yi di ñew mom serigne touba lay jangal ku bëgg nga ku bëgg ñewal ku bëgg ku bëggul bul ñew mais ci la en fait di fess day waji daal doyé bi dama nak no man xarim jaxal étudiant yi dañu daw mais yow boy de secours étudiant yi pay ñew ma leen limu leen di wax te leen di laal parce que jarul njang bu reey dañ koy gis xamni fi da ngay top tank ba nga tank ba nga ba dugg kërëm alors que liñ leen di jangal lepp ci max ci dañu wax ni rek pour faire genre mais ñun ñi sax 
lol intéressé wu dañ koy wax ni rek pour wone ni xamné am nañu xam xam jang nañu ci kaw mais li ma len di wax dañ koy mëna top tank bang ba fi parce que mëno jël dans un pays bo xamanteni les plus riches jang wuñ ci système les plus riches au Sénégal jang wuñ ci école système nga baña changer ci école système bëgg gëna réew ci ndol lol je pense que ay yef la yo xamanteni ku ci nekk suñu dal euh amna liggéey bo wara def en tout cas ñun mom ci liñu wara nekk dañ ci nekk ba jappuri dal mbir yi mom ala kulli alim dina changer bu neexal ko bu ndax rek bu neexal suñu borop serigne touba dañ ko xamé neneen ci ci réew mi ak ci aduna bi contarnant lol tam ci bokku ci école bi sant cheikh fatou ba machallah xamna deñ japp bëss ba xamé dañuy xidmal ci vision économique bi inshallah donc je sais que il y a une heure tant que now j'avais mis ben question pour cheikh babou ak professeur abdourahman so i'll bring cheikh babou and professeur abdourahman back because there is one question that same by had earlier that he would like to ask so i'll i'll have thing by ask that question yes uh, salam uh Let me see here. Uh, I'm going to go to Sia Babu first. Uh, salam, uh, Professor Sia Babu. Uh, yes, I would like uh, to know what you think about, uh, uh, given that uh, there is a Tuba culture, I mean like Murit culture, and also there's a lot of things that can be imported here uh, in the United States or abroad in the diaspora. But what might or what should be left out like because you know sometimes there's a big challenge there's a huge challenge uh, for us to live like you know the way we live in africa as murid so what should be left out so that uh the um uh, the, the messages of shama the bamba would be would be in a fast space because a lot of time it's what's uh slow us down uh Thank you for your question. I think <clears throat> when you think of, of the teaching of Sheikh Ahmed Obama and you think of his work, um, when you think of, of uh, somebody who was critical of his society, uh, somebody who know about what the time he lived in ask and what the possibility were and what was needed for the people of that time. Uh, I think what would be helpful for the Murid is to take that pedagogy with them, to take that pedagogy with them. Uh, in my work, I think of Sheikh's teaching as a counterculture, a, a counterculture that challenged both the traditional Muslim intelligentsia, but also the French civilizing mission. Uh, Sheikh Hamadou Bamba, to some extent, can be called a revolutionary. Clearly, he created a breakthrough. He was not a traditional. He is not a man who said, look, this is what I, I, my ancestors did. I am going to do the same thing. This is what was good for my ancestors. I am going to do the same thing. He was not that person. I think in my first book, I, I, I tried to show, to some extent, how Sheikh Ahmed Bamba's own life trajectory diverged from the tradition of his own tradition, of his own lineage. And I think what is important here is exactly that. That is to understand the Sheikh's work as pedagogy, um, as, as a framework, as a system, that beyond the context, the content of it has some kind of uh, 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 i'm looking for a, a, a mathematical a mathematical concept maybe a vector you know a, a vector is, is something that gives you an angle um an angle or a trajectory i think what is important for us is really to go beyond the the nitty gritty beyond uh, the text and see the essence of the history king and his essence is to be able to understand the society you live in to think about its ills critically and to think about original way of solving those problems. And that's what he did. When he came in in the 19th century, exactly that's what he did. Critical look at French society, a world society at the time and finding solution to help the society find solution to this problem. 
that's the challenge to our diaspora, to the diaspora. Uh, the problem we, we've, we've been having in the diaspora is because of the leadership to a large extent. It's a leadership that just didn't, was not equipped or is not equipped for the work that is not need to be done. Yes, they did a wonderful job of bringing the Muridia in the diaspora, saving it, protecting it, and planting it. But now we need another stage where we need a new type of leadership that can really respond to the challenges of the 21st century. So we need, that's what we need. And of course, whenever you talk about change, you talk about resistance too. There are people who believe that a murid is a murid the way they want a murid to be and will be forever. That the way you are murid in my city of Mbake, you have to be the same murid in, 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 in Tokyo, for example. Well, it is normal. Human beings are naturally resistant or uh, are naturally traditionalist and conservative. But I think we need to move beyond that. That's what what Tuxerin Shafatma was was saying. That's that's the, the challenge of the of, of the diaspora now. How can you continue the work of Shah Ahmed Obama in the 21st century with new material? Because these are not like me. I grew up in Bakebal, you know, uh, seven kilometers from Tuba. I have been going to Magal forever. You know, I am not my son, who was almost born here, who barely speak Wolof was educated in an American school that is very secular and sometimes even anti-clerical. He can't be me. I'm doing my best to teach him the value of the Muridia, but I have to be flexible enough to be able to talk to a way to him, a way that makes sense to people of his generation. That's our challenge. That's our challenge. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, that, made my head clear because uh sometimes we don't dare uh to break the doors you know like uh, uh you know the way we were living in in africa i mean uh, as a movie over there and over here so sometimes that's the challenge and also sometimes because of fear those who don't understand that they uh, gonna misjudge you no matter what you know and don't understand what the other side what you want to uh, uh, accomplish but thank you that made it clear so for uh... let me just add one thing go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, me, because this is not new i remember when uh Sheikh abdullah jay was doing his work in france in the 1970s and he was confronted by the old murid, uh, trad, uh, murid trading community that funded the, the first daira and they came to talk to Sheikh abdullah and told him that well this francophone guy is is saying things you don't understand. He's translating the Sheikh in in English in French. He's talking to the to the, to the white people. We don't understand what he's saying. What we know is Daira and Adia. That's what we know. Sayyid Abdullah called Abdullah Jai and told him one el kingai one, one el kingai one. Very simple but deep. One el kingai one. Yodal buldeglukan one el kingai one. Because there is one way of teaching and translating Sheikh Ahmed Obama. That's how I understood it. And the way to translate it to an, a French or somebody in the Indian Ocean is very different from the way you translate it to somebody who's born in Jambur or Baal. That's exactly what we need to do. And don't worry about what others think. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And yes, uh, that's the key. Uh, uh, and for uh, Professor Kabi, Professor Abdurrahman. Yeah, Professor uh, Abdurrahman. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, you mentioned earlier about uh, the African American uh, uh, and this, uh, the Muridism and the Senegalese community over here, uh, and clearly we see that we have uh, we have uh, like there's a bridge between us and there's a gap too, and. Uh, the what we what we facing the challenge that we're facing is uh that at the same time that we want to save those that are senegalese and were born here we wanted to uh like you know uh reach out to them give them the culture make sure that they 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 speaking proper wall off make sure that they know the shake in the way we know it you know 
uh, at the same time that we want to reach out to uh, the African American community too. So that's why a lot of time, uh, you know, like because a language, if you don't, if you don't hear it, if you don't speak it, you know, you're not gonna, uh, you're not gonna have a good comment about it. So that's why a lot of time I'm not giving excuse, but that's what it, that's that's the way it is. You know, like uh, every time when we in. I, in our community and 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 we're doing our event that's why most of the time and most of the time we 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 using uh wall of as a language and also there's a lot of things in wall of that we understand you know that can uh grab like uh, a more attention than english that's why but and we want to inculcate in that in in the new generation that's in here at the same time they not to Americanize, you know, so that they can get back to their roots. But also, uh, we have noticed that uh, from the get go, when we uh, created NST, now we're sitting to we saw a lot of African American join us. And at the end, you know, like uh, probably they frustrated or probably they don't feel themselves in it. But what is the way that uh, you think that we can collaborate, you know, we can collaborate and not losing? You know, because, like, if, let's say you and me, now we've become friends, no matter what, you're going to influence me, I'm going to influence you. So sometimes it's the fear that, you know, we're going to lose ourselves in the process. That's that's the thing, because a lot of us, they came over here, and they want to Americanize first. And in that thing, in, in that process, they, they, they a lot of them lost themselves, you know. So in, in fear of that, that's why sometimes we kind of trying to preserve what we what the little that we have you know because it's it's really tempting when you're living here and you know uh comparing to a murid uh that's uh living in senegal i don't know if you if you get my idea but what we should emphasize more to bring back the connection you know like uh, and also it's every i think it's everybody's responsibility you know like as well as I think we should educate more ourselves because a lot of us, like I would say like 70 percent of us, they don't have they don't speak well the, the language yet, you know, even though the young, the youngest one doing it. And some of us that are educated, they tend to leave the, the community, you know, like it's like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain that, but uh, that's that's what it is. So I think it should be hand in hand, like, you know. The responsibility is on the other side is is share like uh that's that's what i think so i just wanted to hear like you know what you think about like what we should do and what and is there any work that you guys should do also so that we can uh, be together because i think we need each other to uh take uh shahama the bamba work to the next level uh, thank you well, you know, you raise your 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 your, your t uh, first to begin with. Let me let me just say this out. You know, one of the first things you know, Shemutala told me tonight. You know, if we go to the, the the scholar said earlier about the think tank, and if you go to the Quran and it said Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, and this says that even in Islam, so Ati Allah wa Ati Rasul ulur aminku. You bear Allah and those not Ati Allah. Now, Sheikh Mutala was a unique Marab. And if you want to see, I'm a, as a psychologist and as an educator, you know, and I've worked in a clinical setting, I'm going just based on lived experience and observation. The diary in Brooklyn wasn't the size of the house on 137, 137th Street. But if you go there on Sundays, you couldn't tell the difference if the African-American understood Wolof or not. Because Sheikh Mutala, Mustafa provided the container that Sheikh Mutala gave him. And, he, and, and th that house was full every Sunday. You have African-American coming from afar away as Westchester County. And when we were doing the, the language immersion program for the children, Imam uh, uh, Sir Ilman Saad was the teacher for the children for about a year. And then you have this dynamic relationship between 
Wolof in terms of learning the Casidas and involvement. So the energy was different because they were embracing the container. Now, you talk about a think tank. You had a think tank that embraced both communities. And Sheikh Mutala created a Mamjara Daira and instructed the African American sisters to follow Sister Mina and the late Sister Kabira. And when he, when he created the, the Diggle, the Diggle was the container called the Diggle dealt with Amubil Maruf, with Nai An Min Kor, and the idea of Mau Iza. And in terms of the idea of Hukum, the, in, the, the, the wisdom of governance. So the, the, the Diggle was a governance document. So there was an equality platform that was created when we moved to 137. You ask yourself, we used to have the Harlem Hospital would send the van out to look at the Murid community because we were involved with, they saw changes. The Murid community were no longer transitory, they were more sedentary. So they were staying in one place. So they were now becoming part of the data sets in L challenges. So it's the relationship that was there. Because in everything that you do, relationship is key. In Islam, it's the same thing. So when you when you have that kind of bridging, and you have the intellectual kind of what, what I what I say, Babu said something earlier. And and if you look at the axiological and epistemological of Muridism, Amuru Bamba re-envisioning of a reserve of embracing the breast practices in the Quran and the Sunnah, that become embodied in Sheikh Mutala in our view. And the fact that he gave this document says, well, we have, we have an opportunity to do that. When we went to Timbuktu, Below you said an important thing to me and I never forget it. And if you read the book, it begins with that. Below you in the sixties went to East Africa and he took Shahada. He worked for Julius Nairi. And at one time he was the head of a, pro a project at, heart, at the state office building. And he met most of the independent African leaders. And when you hear him say to a group of us, that Sheikh Mutala take a commitment to our people beyond the leaders they have worked with. He's talking about Julius Nairi and he's talking about others of independent Africa. I used to work for Julius Nairi, Kwame Nkuma, and Balo says Sheikh Mutala take the, the question of the diaspora and our people to a whole different level. That's not a light statement because he embodied that. And, and the embodiment of the governance of Mauritism is in, is in the diggle. Now the question is, in your organization, in the other house, the digital doesn't exist. The relationship with your group as a young, I met you the last time we had that uh, event of the fundraiser and you were downstairs in the basement. I met you with your group. And when you, when you look at, I'm looking at observation because of what I do. I've been in the field for over 40 years. So as a clinical person, I'm saying to myself, what is wrong? And I'm looking at the behaviors. So. Sheikh Mutala brought something different to the table. The same thing happened in, with, with, with the, the group in Washington. Balozi gave them stellar advice. They didn't follow the advice. There was a think tank we had. We bounced off each other, CDs, other people were there. We even invited non-Muslims who had insight. So we created a kind of conference. So one day, I went, this is very important. He passed on. His name is uh, Sheikh Dr. Ibrahim. He was my, uh, one of my mentors. And I invited him one day to the Murid community to an event that we had, a Black History Month event. He says, I'm glad I came, but I have a problem. He's 90 something years old. I said, do the brothers understood really what the Sheikh wanted them to do with the community here? He said, I don't think so. I said, well, you had a point. So this is not somebody who is a nascent person. This is a scholar of repute in our community. And he's telling me this thing. I said, well, they're trying, but we got a culture commission. He said, I hope so. So the question become uh, certain Bay, is that we have to re-examine honestly here. If we have been true to the spirit of the diggle, because if we have a think tank, what you talk about, about the cultural continuum and legacy, that will become natural extension because if, if we are in this space together and you're talking Wolof, Imam Bas, you should try to teach Wolof to the community. And we have the Wolof. You, you, what you do, you enhance the quality of Ajami as a Wolof language. 
So instead of the language we got get mediated by French or, or something else, you have a kind of di a very dynamic uh, intellectual between English and Wolof and Wolofal. So the people can learn. The diary, that's what we used to do with Brooklyn. And so this is not, this no longer exists. We're occupying the space, but you are doing the same thing that the European did by, by erasing the, the, the presence of the African descended people who contribute to the foundation of Buddhism in America. And, and, and I want to stop with this. You've got to understand something. We were able to do something that no one, no other leader from Africa had. Sheikh Mutala, when he came to the airport, had, the, had, had, the, had, the, had the, the, the blessings of the law enforcement. One day we took him from JFK to 96th Street and brought in half an hour. And Sheikh Mutala was smiling. All the brothers in the delegation was part of what Baloji put together because Baloji created a very robust group of people around him with skills to do this. So we're part of the protocol. The question becomes, even before Charles passed, he said, Muhammad, I'm worried about something. I said, yes, I know. And, and so what we talked, going back that time, so the question becomes, where is our commitment to that document? Where is, a, for example, no offense meant to the local imam, young imam. He's brilliant. But when you have three imams, imam, the, the three imams over here, they had a different relationship with the community. The young imam don't have that relationship with us. And he's it, it, not that he's, he's not capable of doing that. He doesn't have the lived experience outside of the text to mediate the space like Imam Bass or the other two had. And that is a burden that he has. And we make do it, make it easier for him. Said so Mutala was wise in what he did. He chose three of them. A alim, a teacher, and a man who himself was uh, became Muslim. And they brought a rich experience with them. That's why people would go, even when Imam Bas would go to visit the other. I, I went with him a couple of times when they had to go to visit the other Muslim Imam. And when you see the brothers in the other mosque and you see their the humility and the respect that they had towards it, that's a magnetism to draw them to modernism. That's a magnetism to, brought, to draw them here. So the question becomes, where did we lose sight of that document? Because you, anyone from Senegal who's here, he is the game changer, not you. He came by Allah's grace and and when, when, when you see him, I mean, yeah, 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 he, I live with him. So he's a different kind of person. I used to live in Tuba in his house with his the kids. And, and, and fortunately, the house is now in obscurity. But I used to live with him in that house. And when he come, you come and, and, and we sit and he talk about certain things. And he, he's, a, he's a very deep person. And, and so when he, when, when he paints something like the, the Diggle, to me, it's not a, a regular document. It's a framework for us to dive deep and say, how do we then put Amadou Bamba's teaching to work in a governance structure that create a kind of di a, a dynamism between the Africans who've been here for the past 500 years and who want to reconnect with home. Africa is home, we know that. We have Marcus Gav, we have Nani, we have all those people, a lot of them come out of Muslim tradition. So, these things are not lost, lost to us. So we understand these dynamical is part of our experience too. So if we want him, we feel, we, we, when you go to Tuba, brother, I was there in December, I'm home. I'm home. I feel home. I feel a different kind of invite. Because there is something special that Allah SWT dropped on St. Tuba. And our people who can get access to it, the digital becomes the conduit. If the digital don't exist, you can't have the conduit. Because you can write text, but you got to have an axiological foundation about adl, justice. And Amadou Bamba was about that. As a foundation, one of the one of the Asmal Usna, the names of God, adl, one of the attributes. So what I'm saying to you, Sheikh Mutala brought that document. That document had the framework. We threw it out. We don't use it. We don't, we, 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 they, had no, they had no discourse. If I want to have a discourse, what is, what is the framework I want to use? I don't have none. 
I don't know nothing about your organization, but if I have to dig it, then I can say, how can I help your group? How, what, what I need to do? The digger tells me that I got to do certain thing. How do, how do I pass the torch? So my son and my grandkids and your, and your generation and can take it and then go down that level. Cause it's a work about rebuilding. It's, it's, it's not about just coming and, and having the, the, the cultural week. We got to celebrate it every short, the, the, the 365 days of the year, create the culture of community. That's what we got to be do, And that's what Shepmotala was about. That's why he chose Baloji. He's very careful. Because Baloji is, a, is one of the most unique African-American human find in our community because of his experience in Africa in the 60s. He met some of the most, if you names of names who are African leaders, he knew them. He met them. And when you hear, like I, I want to reiterate, he said, Shepmotala, take commitment of our people to another level. That's not a, it's not a light statement. That's not a light statement. And that's one of the reasons why Dr. Malik, I don't know if you heard, heard my presentation earlier. When you went to Tuba, he said, I want to use my knowledge because Tuba is a place. I need to set up a, a mechanism to study the epidemiology of our people. Going into the 21st century, so your generation can have the science about how do we solve the, eco the ecosystem and the conditions of people is killing our people globally here in Africa and here. Diabetes, other things that are killing people in Senegal, people in Africa. Tuba is that light to open that door, to shine away. How do we transform our space? So Malik was not just going there thinking, I want to go there and then sit down and eat check. No, we, we went there with a purpose. We were clear what we wanted to do. So if you don't if you if you don't go back and be steward about the digger brother, honestly, trust me, you can't have the conversation. You have no sense, you have no compass, you have no direction. That's essential to understand. Sheikh Mutala represented that, and he is the, the spiritual conduit to the teachings of Saint Tuba. And, and, and if you miss that, you miss something important. And when I see one day we'll talk, because I used to sit and talk to one of his classmates who went to dam with him when he was a child. The man stopped me one day and told us to come, I want to talk with you. An old man. And we had a long conversation. So he's telling me certain things that you and I would never know because they grew up together. They were, they were cousins. So I'm saying to you, this is very, very, very essential. And we have kind of put the digger under the rug. So we have to find a way, how do we bring it back into the conversation? And I think Sheikh Fatima Baki was talking about a think tank. The digger gave us the think tank. Uh, Mika was doing that. Mika Wellness Commission was doing that work. And I don't, I don't know, I don't know what happened. We gotta just rethink, brother. Read vision, inshallah. Hope I wasn't exhausted, but I try to do my best to answer your question. May Allah accept. I hope you're satisfied with my response. You can all get my number from CD. You can always call me and get ready. We can talk if you want one-on-one. -on -one. We can have other conversations. But this is important because you need to connect to the last history of our people in the diaspora. It's not in the, it's, it doesn't, it's not contained in the journal, the nine volume book that's written about Africa. It's not there. Um, yeah. I, I would like to let maybe um, Professor Babu to, uh, give his last uh, words and also uh, have Professor Abdul give his last word. We also have um, Sheikh Abdul Lahad, Mahagana Fatma, who's, with whom we, uh, we, 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 we collaborated to uh, get this um, program as part of the Margo. Uh, join us, uh, we'll have him also share a word with uh, the group. Professor Babu. Thank you so much, Siri. I don't think that I have much to add to what I've already said. Um, just to reiterate how much I welcome uh, this kind of opportunity. And as I said, I think that's where I begin and that's where I also I will end. Uh, to me, there are many different ways of celebrating Shah Hamadou Bamba, his legacy, his work. And I think the best way to do it is through what we're doing right now. Uh, producing knowledge, sharing knowledge, think creatively. Uh, about his legacy and uh, feel a heavy burden to continue the work. Um, that's what I wanted to say. Um, and goodbye to everybody. Professor Abdul Rahman. 
Yeah, thanks. I think that that's exactly it. the knowledge production, the, the conversation that we used to have with the Mika Wells Com Commission. This is as part of extending that. And, and thanks to Babu for, for being gracious and for the question and for the opportunity to have the dialogue. I think we have to have that in the space because we have, a, a, like, like I say, a person who I was making notes earlier, who's an exemplary of, of, of uh, creating a, 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 a kind of legacy and a, and a knowledge framing in Sheikh Mutala. So I think that we have a lot to learn. We have a lot to humble ourselves to have the conversation. And we must be open to have it within the context of the village, the Moorian village square, because that's what going to give the, the next generation some, some models so that they can see that they need agency in having this kind of dialogue we have. I think, thank you for the, for the opportunity and I hope that we continue this kind of conversation. And my salam to all, to, to all of those who are here, inshallah. And I wait to hear from uh, Shah Abdullah and uh, Shukran. My salam to you too. Thank you. And really, thank you to uh, Saint Sam Busso. Thank you to Chef Fatma uh, for really being the shoulder uh, on whom, on which I leaned um, for this uh, uh, event. I couldn't have done it without um, without them. They actually were the true sponsor of this event, and they were very um, welcoming to uh, to us bringing this uh, program to you. So I'll I'll have uh, Sheikh Abdullah back again, Fadma, um, share his perspective and uh, uh, close this uh, event. Encore une fois, vraiment merci, Sheikh Sam, and Sheikh Fadma, qui n'est pas dans le organisé, n'est pas dans le riche. Premier panel, il y a un affaire au lac, un um de Sintubai, Wachi, Bindus, 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 Bamba Bay, um, say Abdul Kader, uh, Kebe, Ak, um, um, Ak, um, Mangi, Mangi, uh, Fatik, um, um, Mamun Jai, Mamun Jai, Senior Senior Mamun, um, Mamun, uh, Monaco, Chibo, Desian Panelibian, um, Mariam Dir Buachi, Ablahi Burum Derby, um, um, uh, Saint Harim Bu Saint Muntaka Ak um Saint Harim Abbas uh Ak Panel B. Donc Sen uh Ablahat um similar. Uh Salaam Alaikum Warhmat Allah Barakat. Girajaf Sen Sidi. Uh yeah, you are exceeding Sam, Girin Santi Kisen uh Tahai Brafet. Uh the new symbol uh book again secular rot and ziar sunu Buddhikere, <laughs> Jabotamgi, <laughs> 
danaka fuñ ma sabax rek dañuy indi téré suñu ba suru ñu baax xadim wala ñu indi iron nabim euh batay yoy moy reference bi mais li fi nekkon ci téré bariwut rawdu rayahid mo mom seq na ci ay djégo avant commune d'organisation bi ndax conférence yi nga xamné dañ ko daan dajal def bind lolu xagn na moy tambali ba motax ñun biñ ñëwé ci commune d'organisation bi ñu nekkat lepp luñ def rek dañ koy teunk baye ko fi ngir histoire mais surtout dañ koy teunk ngir wane aw yoon ñu xamné dañu wax di bind ndax lo bind rek mana dem ba raf wala mana dem ba ñu sopp ko bu ngeen sétlo collègue bi fi jëk def té yeen ñoo ñëpp ngeen participer ci en 2011 fo na acté dañ ko dañ ko bindon consigné ko ba tay ji mi ngi fi mu nek ay del way conférence nga xam dañ ko def ci université yi ay 2010 2011 2012 bu ci nek aussi dañ ko doon bind étude d'impact yi ben bisin sa mom moko defone lool dañ ko doon bind lool nak dem na ba fukki at yi journée lo xamantene bi ñepp gis nañ jarign li ndax leg li nga xamantene bi moy produit ci yoonu mourid kenn 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 xamul nu mu nu mu tollu nga ne fi doon bind nu mu xewé won rek xewat na xew bo xamantene manam mo mo raw sax na bu jek lool nak dañ ci sant sen panel bobu nak fofu lu dugg motax aussi dafa dep ak gis gisu comité d'organisation bi motax ñu am mbekté ci and ko ak yeen ci ñepp xam ne kat li dafa dugg na sax ci organisation magal gi ndax lu koy taral la lu jëmmal la bi wone liggeyup doom yoon ni ño xam ne dañu tassare ñangal ministre yi te ma ngi degg leg cheikhante diko wax li moy li moy yoon bi manam li moy voix bi ñu wara top di muy 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 tassare xam xam muy fok na lolu li ngeen def nak dara gënu ko ci dara gënu ko ci reey motax ñu am mbekté and ko ak yeen di leen xamal na rek li nga xamné mom mo mom lañ ci djublu won yeen tam ngeen mu nekkon seenu djublu fok na né objectif bobu atana dañ ndax tay ji waxtaan ni xagn na bar bi fassanti go ngeen tok waye mel na né yaat na lool ci réseaux sociaux yi ndax ñu bari bari ñu koy def ñu koy def direct bokki talib yu bari ñu koy ñu koy sétane té kon xam xam biñ ci bëggon tassaré tassar nañ ko ci xëtal gi ñu xëtal nit ñi ci ñuy bind loolu aussi amna ci ak nak woné ak xamlé téré yi nga xamné bokk talibé yi ñu ngi koy ñu ngi koy bind loolu lepp nak di encourager nga xamné moy la nouvelle génération ba yalla xir leen ci du jang ndax dañu jëm ci jamono jo xamné képp ku jangul rek ngir nga bokk ci ñi décider du du yombu waye aussi bu jangé mo nopi nak ñu fonku nak di di bind na nga xamanteni mi ñol nako suñu maami doon doon defé kon dal ñi ngi leen di sant di leen gërëm di na xamane liggéey liggéey bu reey 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 ci ngeen ci ngeen nek di féliciter mbollem auteur yi nga xamane ñoo participer ci ci panel yi mais di féliciter également mbollem auteur yi nga xamane xagn na bind nañu te ndax ñepp xaju won ci ci panel yi mais di encourager aussi ñi nga xamane ñi ngi bind ak ñi nga xamne bëgg nañu bind ñi nga xamne loolu moy kessanul ñoon wi te lu aussi moy li nga xamne moy lañu jëmé ci ci karam te nak grand leg bu ñu démé bay tabax ay ay université université yo xamantene bi ci réew mi yépp amu fi kon fok naane aussi ni ñu wara gëna fonké ñi nga xamne moy recherche dafa 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 war yok kon motax ba am am ay cadre yu melni birk dem rek amna ben far ben faro li bo xane amna masalik donc cadre du melni da fay da fay da fay am solo ndax day jappandal da fay da fay yombal da fay da fay tassare da fay da fay bolé ñi nga xamanteni bi ñoo bokk ak djublu ñi nga xamanteni aussi ñom ñepp ñi ñoo bokk métier di nek ay ay bindikat ñi nga xamné na buñu li ñi def buñ ko buñ ci dey yego rek fok naan da fay da fay jëm ci kanam tolu lepp lu yëkëti yoon lay doon luy gëna xamlé sëriñ bi lay doon luy yëkëti drapeau d'islam kon dañu leen sante di leen gëna di sant nak particulièrement sëriñ sëriñ sam ci dizam yu zuñu bi ak itam nak ci ci xëriñ bi ak yow aussi sidi lepp luñu bëssa def rek japp nga ci kon ñi ngi sante ñepp di gëna ñepp wa salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh jërëjëf jërëjëf am tin abdou am sëriñ sam sëriñ cheikh fatma jërëj ngeen def donc amma ko ñu tejji ko fi di ñaan yalla mu am sam ñu sam a njabor gis ta def barke ci liñuy liggey salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullah 
وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وعليكم السلام وعليكم السلام جرجر السلام جرجر وعليكم السلام جرجر